<laughs> All right, welcome back everyone to the Archon Team League Championships. Uh, my 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 name is not Amaz and uh, RDU is not noxious, but he's here to cast with me, so RDU. Uh, you're just done with a crazy series. Uh, are you still feeling like upbeat or a little demoralized? I feel like in the Warrior game there was like almost nothing I could have done. Uh, there was like another more aggressive play, but if I would have went for that and he armored up, I had like no chance to win. So I yep. went for the top deck uh, 5 drop or top deck 4 drop line of play, which I didn't get and I lost. And then in the other game, I don't know, maybe I could have done something different, but uh, I kind of played around bear trap more than freezing trap. And because he got freezing trap, I got pretty wrecked there. But other than well, that, I think we were, uh, hmm? overall, yeah, like you guys, uh, Nihilum, you you did. I, I feel like the games you played were played well. It's not that you played poorly. Like I was talking with the Moz while we were casting. Like all the games, you seem to be uh, on point. I saw, you know, the, the the first match right from Thais. I don't know if you watched that, but the the amount of like the odds that he was going to win this were really high. So I think he played this almost perfectly. Uh, you guys did pretty much everything right. But uh, yeah, it was really unfortunate for everything to happen. But then again, you still have a chance, right? Like tomorrow, you're gonna have another chance to come back in. So hopefully, we see a little bit more of you uh, in the future. Yeah, I'm hoping I hope so. so. So that being said, we're gonna be moving on shortly to Team Archon versus Force and Boys. Uh, these guys are fighting for a chance to stay in the league. Actually, whoever wins this is gonna fight off against you tomorrow. So casting this will give you a good, uh, you know, a little bit of information to say the least. Again, whichever of those teams you end up facing off against. So Team Archon versus Force and Boys. Whoever loses this is knocked out completely. Obviously, it's gonna be a conquest, best of eleven. Team base, same thing as we've had for the entirety of uh, the Archon Team League Championships. Anything uh, predict you predict here, uh, RDU? I predict Sixo's Paladin to go better than yesterday. I tried a similar version on Ladder and I have to say Sixo was really unfortunate yesterday. He had also some weird line of lines of play, but he told me he was really tired and he couldn't play his best. And now today we should expect the best from him. He wants to redeem yeah. himself. Definitely a good thing, and you know, I think a lot of people underestimate Secret Paladin. Uh, I think it's actually one of the stronger decks after a TGT, like it's up there. Uh, not, a, not the strongest, of course, but like there is something to be done with it uh, that is definitely not like tier 5. It's a deck that actually works pretty well if you if it played properly. What do you think is the chance of seeing the, the aggro Secret Paladin have as many complaints about uh, the power of the deck as Patron right now? In like the near future, in like three months, of secrets. What do you think that? What do you think that chance is that in three months, Secret Paladin is like his patron now? I don't think it's gonna be to the level of patron, but I think there is an archetype with the like the, the whole the, the playing anything with the card. Like you don't even have to play all the the early game um, that that he's playing, and you can just still get value out of it. I don't know how high the curve went, like playing all the Dr. Booms. Mysterious Challenger in a mid-range deck is just going to win games. I mean, I think he's running... Was he running an Oyotrons in that deck or not? Uh, no. Okay, because there's like a few versions you can, you can run with this where you're running basically like eight uh, secrets in the deck. Uh, and Mysterious Challenger is going to act as like... A, two more Dr. Booms. You're going to have Dr. Boom and like two Mysterious Challengers just winning automatically so i don't know if it's ever going to be the level of patron um but i think paladin got so much love it's hard to to not see it be tier one like with two decks i expect tiso to even start with the paladin because he wants the win with that deck no matter what he wants to redeem himself from yesterday <laughs> so just like run in and hope that i mean you just head bash against the wall until eventually you get a win i could see that i mean it's it, the thing is the deck really came out poorly from what i saw um yesterday so hey what was your experience with it on ladder it went uh with more than 70 percent win rate yeah no i think it's a crazy deck i, I think overall like secret paladin is is pretty nuts maybe not patron yeah. level because the metagame is going to change it's not just going to be secret paladin coming up right like you're going to have other archetypes from other classes modifying the way the metagame is going to play out um but it's definitely a good contender for like tier one tier two yep Force in versus six zero with Druid, so there's no Paladin coming out. But still six zero. Yeah, <laughs> so he's just gonna go out like full Druid, win the game, then play Paladin, win the game, go home, and, and just rest. In theory, yeah. it's a really good matchup for six zero. Druid should be favored, but we saw that he ha he has Yeti in the deck, and that's quite a weird tech choice. 
Yeah, I think uh, Team Archon was, I think Moz was talking about uh, the Yeti, right? We were talking about that earlier, where by playing Darnassus Aspirant, or Aspirant, I forget how you pronounce that, you're giving yourself uh, the chance, like, you know, twice a chance to ramp, and your four drops become so much better as a result of that. Yeah, but he's getting the best four drop to run. Um, so you've got Powdered Shredder, Savage Combatant, would you play that over it? Hmm, maybe. Okay, so teacher? considering the... Yeah, Violet Teacher. I know Hyped is running the Violet Teacher version. So maybe, yeah, you're right. We'll see exactly if it pans out. For now, there's no Yeti inside. Just a classic case of Shredderino. Nothing nothing out of the ordinary here. Poison doesn't have the Frostbolt to kill the Darnassus. And now Sixo ramped up successfully into Shredder. And it's fine that even if Darnassus dies next turn, he can still coin 5-drop into 5-drop. Yeah, I think uh, the curve from 6-0 is looking flawless. And it's even better than Wild Growth in this case because it's putting a body on the board, right? That your opponent has to address. So your 4-drop or 5-drop are going to do even, you know, a, a better job. Wow, and he's going to stay yeah. on the board one more turn and allow 6 to just coin out Emperor. It'll be a really weird game. Like, the way 4 would win is if he gets a fast Emperor and an Antonidas. And 6-0 uh, wins by just pressuring force, and so he has the edge, obviously. Yeah, and I think Darnassus Asp like Aspirant is one of those cards that, when it was revealed, everybody thought it was insane. But when you see it in action, it looks even stronger than I even thought. Because, like, you're doubling the amount of wild growths you've got in your deck, right? And I think the body that, that it's putting on the board is such an annoyance. It's such an annoying card, because you can't let it live, but you don't want to waste time killing it. Yeah, we also see Sixo manipulating the mana, that's something also that is really interesting. You can play your whole mana and then kill Dynastus, make a profitable trade, yep. and then still be ahead in uh, power. Yeah, you don't even need that mana crystal sometimes after you're done. Uh, I think that's a really good the good point you're making, is you can actually use that mana before you're done. Like, it's not going to give you the mana, uh, and then you lose the minion you played with it at the end of the turn. Forsen is forced to use the fireball. He doesn't want Forsen's to do it, forced. but he has to. For the face with the Acolyte. I mean, he did get quite a few draws. And now the question is, uh, of course, like, is Forsen going to be able to wipe the board at any point? Like, so it's far his hand is not lining up for this. And it's already difficult against a Druid to pull off. Because between the, you know, Swipe Wrath, the Keeper of the Grove, you've already got so many things denying you the ability to, to wipe. Uh, when they're ramping up so fast, I'm not even sure how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, the game is too fast now for Forsen to come back into it. Like, uh, I mean, whenever Sixo drops the load, right? then... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, whenever Sixo goes for the load, then he just shuts Forsen down for one turn, and that's like, uh, potentially game-winning. But, uh, Loot Hoarder is also pretty slow. He just goes for the card and hopes he gets uh, Flame Strike. Yeah, I think that's a great play. I mean, at this point, you've got to find anything that takes the board away. Like, nothing else will do it. Yeah, you need to stabilize board and then play Antonida somehow. And if you get him to survive, you probably win. So I guess you just play Dornatus Aspirant for the extra body at this point, because it's not going to get it wiped. Like, Blizzard can't be played, Flamestrike can't be played, getting an extra 2-3 could be good enough. Is there even a drawback to playing it? Maybe like an Ice Block you have to go through and then you lose the board, then you have one less minion to play later? Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe Dornatus yeah. was better than the Hero Power. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was asking. It's like... Is there a reason not to play the Aspirant here? Are you that afraid of popping the block and then the mage goes for another wave of like a board clear and then you're out? I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe he values the sniper. <laughs> Wait. So he, he can pop the block if he wants, that's for sure. Yeah, but isn't killing Antonidas better in theory? Actually, you, you it really depends. Pop block. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd pop the block in this position because like the odds of you not being able to do it again next turn are pretty slim, right? Like he has to have like an ice barrier and an ice block, and you can charge I your think, druids. Oh man, this is, so, this is a really tricky spot. You pop the block without using uh, force of nature. You want to keep the force of nature in your hand, so you just use a keeper of the grove, most likely, or a druid of the claw. It's up to him. Well, he has he, multiple he, ways. Uh, can you, can you do it with keep, with uh, Keeper of the Grove? I'm looking at 9, 11... Okay, yeah, he'd be fine. Yeah, you're right, never mind. Keeper of the Grove is the play. I thought he was one-off popping the block with Keeper. I was thinking, uh, use the... 
Drill the claw. Actually, pop him with force might be better. Because you don't have to attack into the ice barrier afterwards. Or you can also not pop the block. <laughs> I guess you can do that too. Alright, never mind. Sixo was afraid of letting Adonidas leave. Because uh, Forsen could stabilize with Alexstrasza, but I'm not sure. It's a really tough turn. It's like a turn that you take like 10 minutes to analyze. And it's yeah, so hard to pull to in one in minute. It. Exactly. You have like one minute to make the decision. And very often when it comes down to those things that you haven't seen before, you're usually more cautious than otherwise. Now he can still pop the block, but Forsen has a med scientist on the board. And there's no way to pop the block and silence the scientist. Is there? Well, oh, actually, no, you, there, you there is, there to. is. You can, you can double silence. Silence your low tip and silence the scientist. Yeah, but he's gonna be on five, right? Yeah, so you can just do it of the clone next turn. <laughs> All right. Hmm. May, uh, maybe I like that Maybe that, that was the play, because... actually. Maybe that was the play. Well, I mean, you're still killing him through Ice Barrier here, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Even if he gets Ice Barrier now with Ice Block, you just play Keeper. The only thing that punishes you is, like, Ice Barrier, Ice Block into Alex Strauss on the following turn, but then he doesn't wipe your board if he does that. So there has to be a mix of Nova's Doomsayer Secrets into Alex, and then you're probably going to be able to finish him off anyway. It's very hard to play this if you're forcing. You're just pressured and pressured and pressured. Now he's guaranteed a nice block at least, right? So that that's pretty sweet. Is it? He could. Play oh, he as... has two barriers to play. <laughs> you have to go barrier Nova. Like there's no no choice. I'm pretty sure there were better draws than the second barrier <laughs> for forcing. <laughs> oh, flint strike does it, but then how do you live? Blizzard? Blizzard would have been better, I think. Now Sixa just goes for the Keeper. Brock's the yeah. block, really safe. And, uh... Yeah, I'm I mean, sure this is what Dornessus' Aspirant does. Like, this is what it does. It's such a frustrating card to play against. Because you have to remove it to deny them the permanent ramp, but that takes resources, that takes time, and if they can curve that with an extra Innervate or an extra Wild Growth, then they're just double ramping on you. And because it's a body, it's gonna put some damage in. Yeah, Which now there's no way. Positive. Now there's no way for Forsen to get HP and kill the board. Yeah, Alex so. Shazza was the only way, but like even that lost in the game. Yep. Heal bot. He struggles. Oh, yeah. hello. The heal bot can't freeze everything, so he just hopes he doesn't have a second keeper of the grove or a it's swipe. The best yeah, line of play. Like, no swipe, no keeper, and you would have won this. So Forsen goes down first game against the Druid. I think, however, that this is a pretty good match for the Druid player. So it's not very unexpected. Like, this is pretty much what you're looking for when I think you play Druid. Even the classic one. Not even with Darnassus Aspirant, right? Yeah, I think uh, it's very good for Sisu that he took that game. He needed some morale from yesterday. <laughs> from what happened yeah, yesterday. Well, I'm hoping to see the Paladin win, just because, like, everybody seems to be bashing on it that I've seen, right? Like, I've seen so many people say that deck is garbage, but I've actually played a deck like this, and it's way better than people give it credit for. Like, way better. It's not even funny how good it is. Um, and I, I'm kind of disappointed that it's, like, discredited so much because of its first tournament appearance, uh, you know, and somehow it didn't perform. So I'm really just hoping to see 6 0 just crush somebody with it, like, completely. <laughs> That, he has that, a lot of good matchups. He has a lot of good matchups, indeed. Like, uh, Shaman is probably a favorable matchup. Warrior is actually better than Agro Paladin was before. Agro Paladin is super good. Hunter is good. Zoo is really bad, and Freeze Mage is really bad. So, Sixo doesn't want to face Forsen with his Paladin. Well, I mean, Forsen has. Yeah. Do you think they're going to stand out Forsen again? I, I mean, if they do, they risk getting benched. Actually, now is like the best spot for Sixo to go for the Agro Paladin. Yeah, for, look for the Pally, yeah, probably. Because if you look at the the way this lines up, if they want to defeat it very nicely, they have to throw in their own Forsen again. And then Team Archon could isolate the other decks a little bit more easily. Yeah, at the same time, if they expect Forsen to go now again, they can just go with Zalai's Patron. But uh, that's where the mind games kick in, and uh, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. Uh, Skako, the warrior, and Zalay with the warlock. Alright, 
All right. Yeah, at the same I, time, I both teams can just randomize, and then it doesn't matter. <laughs> of course, yeah. You always say you always say that. Like whenever I ask you, hey, what do you think? Yeah, you always like you just shuffle it up, right? Sometimes you randomize, sometimes you pick. Um, yeah. Try to counter pick. So, what do you think are the like? Have you already done most? Like, have you tried out most of the decks that came out since TGT? Like, have you looked at all the possible archetypes that you think are going to be competitive? Most um, of them, but it's pretty hard because there are so many new cards and new decks appear daily. Like, there's not a refined version of the Paladin deck, there's not a refined right. version of the Token Druid deck, and it's very hard to, like, find the best refined versions, and yeah, it'll take yeah, a while. That's right. I, I think that's basically what's going to, like, to, to make it... It's going to take a long time before we actually see all those decks that, are, that seem novel and quote-unquote bad, and then they're just going to crush everyone, and we're going to be like, well, this deck is now OP and we need to nerf it. Yeah, Secret Valley is coming. <laughs> I hope so. Let, 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 it, let it be real. Let the Mysterious Challenger shine a little bit. Archon got mean? a really favorable matchup. I think being yeah. Zalei, you keep the Mountain Giant and you keep the Woods. The Mountain is like one of the best things you can have versus the Patron. Of course, the Dream Start is going Twilight Drake into Tap Giant. That's like the Dream. And then having Woods for the Death Bite. You just win instantly. As was Kaka, he knows he's facing Handlock, and that's an advantage because he can hard mulligan for Emperor and executes and not keep fire war axes. So uh, I expect a pretty good game. Was Kaka also being one of the best Payton players in the world? I mean, Zele knows everything about the matchup, right? Like being on the other end of the, the, the that's the thing is Zele has played Patron enough that he knows what to expect and he knows how to counter it the best. So he'll know when to time his uh, his counters. Yeah, but at the same time, Osaka played Peyton enough to know how to play this matchup too. Yeah, so exactly. It's I guess it's, it's a matter of uh, so who draws the best hand. But this ooze is a really big deal. Like to be honest, this ooze is going to be uh, pretty meaningful if this bite gets developed, which it will, of course, at some point. I like the Twilight Drake too because they're forced to execute it, and then you can just tap into Giant. Yeah. And then they try to weapon and try to kill you. You ooze and you win. We see double inner reach from Oskaka. That's not the best. I mean, if you pick up an Acolyte of Pain, it can help a bit, but honestly, unless he picks up like a crazy patron turn. Um, I mean, these are mostly late game cards, or you're trying to go crazy on a push after that's by development and a pop. But if the patron's not there, then it's not going to do much. Oh, wow. Yeah. Minus one mana inner rages. That looks good. Well, Emperor is like the best card versus Handlock. It's yeah, the card that wins you the game. Without Emperor. I think you have like a 5 or 10% win rate. Maybe the, I say, really bad numbers, but it's super bad without Emperor. With Emperor, numbers go increasingly high because you can bypass towns and stuff like that. Well, it's giving you the ability to use those executes and whirlwinds for free, right? Like, those are the combo pieces that you need to reduce the cost of just because of, like, the, the fact that sometimes you have to remove two taunts at once, make sure that you have enough uh, you know, mana to put in a, a Frothing Berserker on top, and that's going to give you even more damage to push phase. So, yeah. Yeah, you usually need double frothing to kill the handlocks, and you don't have Pretty the mana much. without the Emperor. Yeah. I just wonder, though, if things will change a bit. Because, like, Patron is still considered, you know, the deck. Um, but is it a matter of time before something else takes its place? Or is it still going to... Because I don't see what about Patron is weaker now, right? Like, sure, they released Eadric the Pure. Sure, they released Chill Maw. Um, but I don't think that's remotely enough uh, to stop the deck from doing its thing. So I'm, I'm really just not sure what about it is kind of worse now after TGT. There are a lot of fast decks and fast deck Spanish patron. Okay, so you think just the speed, like speeding up the meta game, would be enough? Usually, I mean, yes. divine shields would do it. Okay, so but then and... patrons just start running double ghouls and go full defensive. Yeah, ex exactly. They just start running more early game taunts, and they compensate to still get to that late game, right? So yeah. that, that's why I always, because it's so flexible, it's such a, an easy deck to tech properly that once you know what you're up against, you can just modify a few cards here and there and suddenly your matchup goes up against, you know, the entire field that you you expect. I still think that the deck is needed in the meta game because it keeps aggro in check. Like, Face Hunter is not that great because of Patron. And, yeah. That's a good point. If it keeps the, if it keeps the, the meta game in check, then sure. Maybe what do you there's think an argument to be play? made for it. What um, do you think of Zalei's play? I think it's very interesting. To mm. develop the... Uh, Who's the going here? for the giant? Well, that, that's... Uh, 
I mean, you're denying your opponent the ability, because you don't have Hellfire, right? So you're denying your opponent the ability to go for a pop that's bite with Inner Rage, Inner Rage Patron. So maybe that's the idea. At the same time, he can still play the Giant now. Tap Giant is uh, a line he can have the following turn that is now, so... Uh... I'd probably take it. I mean, wh okay, what's the drawback? Because I guess if he held on to an Execute and didn't kill your Drake, then maybe that's a little bit worse. Maybe you could play your second Drake to really force the Execute. Yeah, the drawback is if your opponent has a second Death's Bite, then he can kill you with Frothings because you weren't too aggressive. But I guess that almost never happens, so you just go for the Ooze. At the same time, Oskaka has a really powerful Emperor next turn, and if he picks up a Frothing Berserker, the damage will start to grow. It's all about whether or not the Giant survives though, so if he goes for the Drake, he's definitely just trying to pile on the damage on the Warrior. Like, little by giant little, forcing him to answer. I think the Giant was more pressure, like, obviously. I think it's self-evident. Now, Oskaka playing the Emperor here isn't even good, so he's gonna have to wait a little longer. I don't think it does enough, just yet. Because you're still looking for those combo pieces that win the game, don't you? He just plays it and hopes Zale doesn't have Mortal Coil, which Zale has. Two of. Usually if you get a cause reduction on Warsong, it's enough. And especially he got it also on the Ghoul and Balrage. He can use the Balrage next turn to cycle and get to the Frothing. And then if he gets Frothing and the Whirlwind effect, maybe another Frothing. Uh, having already executed, he can threaten little. That's his only line of play right now, and uh, he took it. I have to expect a trade. So, do you think... Wait. I think Giant Sun Fury is fine here. Like, Giant Sun Fury with a coil trade on the 4-3. Yeah, I like that. Like that that's probably the most consistent play, because you're forcing him literally to have the weapon, the two executes, and some kind of weight to push for your face. Um, and even then, like he still, you still have time to tap into those Moltens. The yeah, question is... Still. What's up? The question is, what Giant do you trade? Uh, what Drake do you trade? Oh, he decides to go for another play. So it doesn't uh, want to play the Giant this turn, or just without the... Uh... Hmm. Does, does he think his opponent is playing Brawl? Is that a thing? You know, Zelay is playing this Mountain Giant so cautiously. I don't so like So he's this really play. trying to dodge the Execute. I think the play was trading the 4-9 four, four Drake and using Mortal Coil, and then playing the Giant and some Fury on the Giant and on the 4-4 four, four Drake, and then push 7 to the face, he would put Oskaka at 15, and uh, he would have 16, 18, 21 damage, so he would win next turn and have a more powerful board, while now he's really, really weak to patrons, and he doesn't have a Hellfire. But well, that's, not what I'm, that's, that's what I find a little... Yeah, the Shadow Flame's gonna carry, but I find it a little weird, the way that this Giant was never played. He decided to not threaten Lethal for some reason. I don't know the reason yet. Maybe he has a reason that we didn't think of. Hmm. So, I mean, he almost want to play... Ghoul, Whirlwind, Battle Rage. God, that's horrible. What about the Inner Rages? It's a very bad play, but you have to do it. That's uh... <laughs> That is desperation at its best, right? Like, I've never seen something so desperate. That is the difference between good players and uh, very good players. Very good players try to win even the games where they have 1% to win them. And Osaka is trying to do this right now. He's trying yeah. to pull the impossible. Like, if you get to win a game where you have 1%, it still makes your win rate bigger. And you well, have to I saw go him. for it every time. He did it last time, I think. There was a game that everybody thought he'd lost. Like, completely lost. And he salvaged it from the brink. Mm. Like, wait, no, it was against Savic, I think. A Mech Shaman game that he played. It um, was versus Show. It was, uh, was Mech Shaman versus Show's patron. And he still lost that to Show's top deck. But he right, stabilized. Right, right. But he stabilized and he was about to win. Like, yeah. the unwinnable. That was literally a 1%, <laughs> I think. Like, the streak of events that could have led to that win was so improbable. Oh, um, but he did it. So I think I think you're right. Like it's definitely a, a trademark of a good player or a great player, in fact. Uh, that just you know you take those small edges where you find them, even if they look like nothing. And now Zale is not in the best spot. Yeah, he he could have been like just killing his opponent outright almost. 
Now he could kill him. He could just all the town. Even like trade the woods because he would still have the woods. So now, even if patron comes out though, well, if patron comes out, yeah, actually, if patron comes out, that's pretty brutal. How is frothing? Is that close to little? Actually, it might with the double inner rage with ghoul. And if he had one more whirlwind, it would probably be lethal. But because yeah. he doesn't have the whirlwind, he is probably not well, lethal. Well, the, the ghoul, the ghoul is close. The ghoul could attack into something. Slam could get you a whirlwind. Two, three, no. four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So you can't play slam. Otherwise, you can't draw. Ugh. Okay. Well, he's gonna have to do the math on this because definitely the um, the war song fraud and ghoul is the closest to a lethal as I can spot. He has 17 damage, I think, after my first fight calculation. It's really close. He's trying to find the execute here. I think the most damage possible was Warsome Commander, Frothing, trade the Ghoul into the 3-2, then Fiery Warax the 1 to Slime, and then double in a Rage or Frothing. You're Frothing and go face, yeah. And you I have 17 the damage. Tool. So he's, he's digging for that second execute. If he finds it, there's actually a chance he stabilizes. Alright, that's not it. He's gonna have to play the Armor Smith with the Ghoul here, probably. Or just the Ghoul alone. But it's not gonna be enough. Well, it's a pretty lopsided matchup for Handlock. Going into it, we pretty much had a, we had a good idea that uh, it was likely that Team Archon was going to take this one. Yes, Zalai played it safe and uh, he managed to win. But he yeah. almost lost to the power of the Patron deck. What do you expect in the next games? I mean, I'd like to see the Shaman come out, but... I, like, I, if we look at the lineups, you've got Team Archon, they, they can actually get a check mark on 6-0 if they decide to throw in the Paladin. Um, and they, they, I, I don't think it's that unreasonable to throw it. Like, what matchup are you really looking to target? I guess now that Forsen's back in the, like, Forsen's back in the lineup, like, he didn't get benched at all since he didn't send them out. Uh, maybe it's not the optimal time for the Secret Pally. I mean, well, yeah. like, it's kind of tricky. At the same time, do you, what do you expect from your opponents? Do you expect them to go Chucky because they already went with Forsen and Oskaka? Or do you expect them to just try their chance with Oskaka again? But you usually don't want to get your Patreon player benched. It's like the worst thing possible. So I don't think Oskaka will go again. I really think Chucky or Forsen will go. So what's the best deck versus Chucky and Forsen? Agro Pally could be fine. I mean, if Chucky's running, if Chucky running Agro Pally. Yes. That's probably a good deck to pull out right now, then. Because against Patron, you can punish them by being super quick, depending on how your deck is built. Against another control, uh, another aggro pally, you can probably pull off sort of a mirror match, right, in a way. Against the Rogue, maybe it's a bit tricky if they get good Blade Flurries and Fan of Knives early. But usually you can snowball them damage-wise. Uh, if they have too big of a hand, you can abuse them with Divine Favor. Freeze Mage is a bit weird, though, but... It's funny because Rogue is really the same as the Secret Paladin, but it's not that great versus Agro Paladin. Well, Secret Paladin yeah. beats Agro Paladin usually. It beats in the it. Match. it. Yeah, exactly. It's got the I edge because it sticks on the board a bit more with uh, bigger minions that are affected by just one cost spells instead of having to play a Blessing of Kings or something. Yep. I think that if they go with 6 0, they will hope for Chucky and not for Forsen or Skaka. Or yeah. Shaman is okay. Best I mean, would be, be even to go with Patron from Zalei. Why not? Yeah, I mean, he did win with the handlock, so if you queue in the patron, you've got a good matchup against the field, just because it's patron, and then you can probably take it. I mean, Forsen is likely playing a zoo deck, right? Is he? Uh, yeah, he's playing zoo. Yeah, I so... Think, I think the best matchup Forsen boys has versus patron is their own patron, maybe Shaman too. So, uh, that's the two decks Oskaka plays. Yeah. So unless they want to risk Osaka getting benched, they'll probably not use him. And therefore, Archon might have to go for Patron to just secure another win. Alternatively, I think Team Archon, like, there's been a huge edge that we've seen over the past uh, over the past few months in the Team Archon, uh, in the Team League Championships. We've seen uh, players try to get one win on each player just to make sure that the bench rule never applies and they can't get isolated at any point. So maybe Firebat will come out with either of his decks. But I don't know if Force and Boys, like, it depends. You'd have to analyze the trends of teams. Do they like to go for that, you know, spread the wins or lock down players, you know, by just going check a mark on one of them and then keep going with two guys? All right, looks like it's going to be a fire bad play, trying to get a win on one of three players. 
Shock, he's gonna be playing his probably aggro pally. Yes, each team played uh, each player until now. They didn't play twice. That's quite interesting. Shaki needs a really powerful hand to do something against the rogue. But if Firebad manages to get a heal, he's kind of favorite. This matchup can go either way. Like, Chucky can uh, just use all his hand and then play Divine Favor. And Firebad can just find his heal and Fan of Nice and insta win. So, I think it's like the perfect 50 50 matchup. Yeah, it's a pretty good coin flip to have. <laughs> it's not really a coin flip because every mistake you make can cost you the game. Right, like of course. Flip, if, like, if you go in blind, right? You go in blind, equal skill, both players are kind of playing optimally, then yeah. let's say it's a 50 50. Yeah. Yep. We'll see if any, like, do you, do, can you spot big mistakes? Like, do you think, like, what kind of mistake does Agro Pally make against the rogue player? Like, is there ever a point where, well, I mean, not drawing Lotheb is a misplay, of course, but that's, <laughs> that's one that Shaki's already got under control. Oh, I forgot, Shaki runs the slower Agro Pally with Palatid Shredder. I'm not sure if this version is that good versus rogue as the other one. Maybe it's better than the Worgen one, but it's, like, worse than uh, the Haunted Keeper one. I think. Also, so something really like interesting. Flood the board with sticky minions. Go ahead. Uh, something really interesting. Firebat kept the teacher in the starting hand. What do you think about that? Does he just want to like overextend uh, the board and win afterwards? One of the things I like about Valak teacher is that against against Paladin, if you've been able to control their boards somehow, they have to have Truce over Champion followed by Consecration, right? Like in that order to deal with it super effectively, or have a one-one. But if you've played your rogue deck properly then you haven't allowed them to keep the 1-1s. One so, yes, and I, I think it's a pretty good idea. They don't really want to use the 2 silver to kill the teacher. They want to use right. it for the face. Exactly. True silver is like twice... Like, like, true silver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true silver is twice our king golem. Oh man, for 4 mana? You don't give your opponent mana crystal? That sounds good. You also heal yourself. That sounds the best balanced. card to race. <laughs> Chucky's hand is terrible. Yeah, he even silences the nothing on that guy. Both players right. didn't have two big power plays, like Firebat played the 3-2 the for no buff on the weapon, and Shaki used the Owl for no advantage. Yeah, I think Firebat's in a really good position here, unless Shaki picks up like a crazy sweep to wipe the board, like a Consecration that's gonna do something, which doesn't look like it's gonna happen now. Um, this is looking very favored for Firebat. Uh oh. Yeah. Chucky's draws are really subpar. You don't want to see Arcus when you have no board. Yeah. I think Chucky's version is super bad versus Rogue. Even if Rogue gets no heal, they can just destroy your board. Well, it's kind of like when you play mid range Hunter against Rogue, right? Like, it, you'd rather play something a bit faster because your mid range, like, you get the bigger minions that you invest so much into, you get them sapped, and you have no way to just completely come back in just one sweep. Yeah, hybrid is so much better because you have Arcane Golems and you can just push a lot more damage. And you don't have slow cards like Savannah, so they don't really have what to stop. Shredder is like the best sub target. Bing Chucky, do you low tip here or do you go for the Squire play? I like the Squire play a lot because you can kill that, that, uh, that Violet Teacher without investing anything else into it and you still keep two minutes that are pretty sticky, right? Yeah, just for the removal not. purpose. It sucks that you're not pushing phase, but. It's also probably the only time trading is uh, the correct play as Agro Paladin. I know, I'm guessing we're gonna see a fan of knives. How would you sap on a taunt? So you sap... Well, you have to pop the Shredder at this stage, right? Like, you can't just give it back to him and have him replay with the dude. Or could you? Mm. I, I think it would be a little... It would feel a little awkward to do that. If you sap, if it, you can't play anything else, right? So, you can fan of knives. Yeah, I think mm. fan of knives would be my play of choice. How is Azure Drake into top deck prep? <laughs> uh, if that's if that's what you think your best odds of winning are, like your best your best odds, then I guess go for it. Oh, Succubus Ooh. is a pretty tough card to find here. The Fireblast is going to take it in stride, just drops a Lothab, not a bad idea, it's actually pretty good. The thing is it's going to get countered by its own Lothab and then Pally can push for quite a bit of damage. 
Uh, actually, that's a huge lead that Shockey's taking by countering with his own Lothab. Unfortunately, he, do he cannot Blessing of Might. But it's still like a really good spot for Shockey now, somehow. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, this is a crazy good spot for Shockey. He made the worst hand into pretty uh, into a pretty good hand. The Succubus made the worst hand into a pretty good board. I think the Succubus was a big deal because I think Firebat was aiming to use Phantom Knives to remove a smaller minion with like 2 health or 3 health. Um, like pretty That's fast. That's one off. Of course. One off. Yeah, I'll just push. Push it! You're gonna top deck Truce over next turn, you know it. Don't you play Shield and Minibot over pushing 3 damage just for... Yeah, I, I might play... Yeah, I probably play Shield Minibot, Kings, and then Blessing. Probably you're fine with just pushing full face. Let's see what. Uh... I mean, I'm I'm fine with every line of play he takes, but I don't mind the shield mini bot just because it survives like a blade flurry. Like they have, he has to tank it with the Drake if he wants. Do you ever consider trading the Drake here? No. Right. No, I don't think so. No, I, I actually I, I actually thought about it um, for a minute. It's very bad against blade flurry. Well, that's right. a blade flurry. That's that's a pretty sweet blade flurry because now he can wipe the board and get the blade flurry. He's still dead to choose our champion, and he needs to tank the mini bot. Does right? he want to? You're dead to Consec. You can just attack with the Drake. You have to attack to, with the Drake in the Argus too. You cannot use it otherwise, yeah, right? Do, do you ever use this, or do you go dagger, fan of knives, blade flurry? Oh man, that's so awful. I, I mean, if he picks up a prep, he can actually dagger Tinker's Blade Flurry. Yeah, but without the prep, how does he do it? Yeah, well, he has to tell like, the prep. Oh, actually, he has no, to he can't even. What? Wait. Oh, no. He's, gonna, he's yeah. gonna make the trade. He's gonna have to, to make the trade. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, if he picks up a prep, though. If he picks up a prep, he can go Assassin's Blade, prep, Tinkers, and push for a lot of damage. Uh-oh. Better sab that thing <laughs> before disasters happen. Jackie has, like, a lot of draws for lethal. Yeah. To now see for Barking Golems. Whoa. Oh, he got a prep. Yeah, but now he's dead to the 1-1. One -1. You just sab the Leper now. And then you Assassin's Blade kill the 1-1, one -one, and the next turn you go prep Tinkers Tinkers? Nah, you just go You have to face. kill that 1-1, one -one, right? That he, there's, no way he, he, like, there's no way he goes for that 1-1. One -one. I don't see him doing that, but if, if what's in your opponent's hand is not an Arcane Golem, it's not a Wolf Rider, it's not a, it's not a True Sword Champion, it's not a Hammer of Wrath, it's not a Consecration, like, it's got to be a buff. So you can tell that it's probably Blessing of Might or Blessing of Kings. As yeah, awkward and could, weird as that sounds. It could also be Divine Favor, but he would have yeah. used it last time. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think that Divine Favor was too good not to take. Fireblast's gotta have to push face, right? There, there's... I kill the 1-1, one -one, as you said. I mean, I guess I guess you can kill the 1-1, one -one and then like sprint at the backstab, or sap number 2. As you said, if you take it from a rational point of view, what can that card in the hand be? It has to be a buff. It's not, it cannot be anything else, right? Maybe there's something else that could have been that I didn't think through. Maybe you kept the Consecration there because you, you want to surprise your opponent with a kill with it, right? Instead of playing it just for two. Um, Does Shaki have Consecration in that deck? I don't think he even has Consecration. I don't think so either. Um, maybe it was like, I don't know, a Deathwing in Agro Pally. I have no clue. Uh, but yeah, I think if you, if you look at all the cards that could have been, I think Firebat had a pretty good... Um, idea what it was but that's gonna give a win for force and boys right so shocky gets uh, his first win maybe gets the check mark soon enough uh now i want to see the uh, the other paladin i'd like sixo to bring his own out come on sixo bring it out he might still be afraid to play it because he got so much trash talk from the community for losing that games yeah i mean but... you mentioned there were a few misplays because he was tired and that can definitely play a big role in your ability to pilot the deck perfectly right like there's a huge difference the... It was a blessing of kings that he could have played on a divine shield and mini, mini bot, yeah, and he didn't. That was one. But still, it's not easy to play under so much pressure in this kind of tournament. Yeah, and I think the fact that his deck was ridiculed really doesn't help too much. <laughs> like that—that's really the the biggest. Like I think the 
the crux of this entire thing is that that's the point that might make him hesitate to even play it again. Um, but I really like the deck, and I think it's gonna win. My my hope is that it does. Um, I hope it doesn't come to Zik like he's still getting reverse sweeped again as the last player standing on Team Archon because that would be devastating. I think that deck is awful versus Freeze Mage, mediocre versus Zoo, and he has these pretty good matchups. So if he queues that two matchups in a row, he might be so tilted that he loses the other matchups too. Well, I mean, it's like every deck that tries to contest the board against Freeze Mage and Zoo, right? Like, you're always losing the board game. Like, Freeze Mage will punish you for the most part. Zoo will generally outboard you. It's very hard to just have a better board than a Zoo. Um, so that's the reason, for the most part, why that deck suffers. But yeah, as you said, if he can just get into a Hunter, uh, or Shaman, or even Patron in a weird way. Like, you don't really want to run into Patron too much, I think. Uh, but it's still fine. It's better than the old Agro Paladin, because you have Get Down. Yeah. You can play Seca Keeper, Get Down, and then they try to fire your Warax it, and then the 2-1 blocks it. And then you play under Secret, you get her out of reach from the Fire Warax, and you just noble it with uh, Divine Shields and buffs. I, I suspect maybe like the, the optimal way to build that deck might be to maybe ditch the Secret Keepers. Like, you can try the same deck uh, with, you know, the whole, uh, you know, play a lot of dudes approach. Mm. Right, like, the you just play all the dudes in the world, and you just play Secrets on top with Monsieur Challenger, and you ditch the Secret Keeper. So you can kind of... And you play, like, six Secrets instead of eight. Um, he is playing eight, right? I'm not mistaken. I think he's playing nine. He also has... Okay, yeah. uh... You, you can reduce like a lot of the secrets. You can cut quite a few of them. It'll lower like the bad draws. You just put more dudes, like crazy amount of them, and you'll get crazy pushes with the warhorse trainer and the quartermaster and the silverhand regent, even replenishing your board on a whim. It's pretty interesting. All right, so Zelay versus Shaki. Warrior coming Warrior out against Shaki. the hunter. That's the best matchup. For. For Warrior, of course. Yeah. Like Hunter is. So hard to win it as a hunter, you just have to hope they don't have it, but somehow they always have it. <laughs> no, does no he have the cruel taskmaster? Does he have the yeah. cruel taskmaster? Oh yes, he does. Alright, does he have the war axe? Oh yes, he does. Does he have the armor smith and the acolyte of pain? I guess he does. <laughs> oh man, I saw, I saw all of this, it hurt. I already have a flashback from two hours <laughs> ago when I played it. Yeah, it's like the, I, you're gonna have to undergo like trauma therapy. Uh, better do it quick. It's happening again tomorrow, RDU. You're going. To, you're going back in for another round. Yeah. Hmm. It's a really hard decision for Zale. Does he keep the frothing berserker too? He can get punished by. Wow, he keeps patron too. That is super greedy. Okay, let's see how that goes. I think what his his line of thinking is probably that fiery war axe can carry him to where Grim Patron will be useful. But, like, does he need to draw it that badly? Like, is it so important to find that you're gonna keep it in your opening hand is what I find odd. I know, I never kept Patron versus Hunter and I have a pretty good percentage versus them. I don't know, I, I'm really curious how this uh, goes. Because Ale is known as one of the best Patron players in right. the world. So, I think he has an idea of why he's keeping the Patron. At the same time, Jackie is one of the best Hunters in the world. He's got a good idea why he gets two jugglers in his opening hand. Versus the fire war axe. <laughs> of course. They're not the best. A stable goal. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's possible that, like, Patron will cut fire war axe and they'll still get it. Like, they'll cut one and they'll still always have it when I play Hunter. It's the curse, I guess, of playing against well, back, back in the day, when I was playing Zoo, I knew that the chance of opponent having fire wires was 50% that I tracked it and they would have it they had it like 90 something percent. So I'm not sure. <laughs> something is wrong. Oh my god. If that's actually if that's actually the case, that's that's amazing. We have to reproduce those findings with proper methodology. Maybe we'll find the exact same thing is true. Maybe I was just biased. But Yeah, uh, you just stopped tracking the games where it didn't matter. <laughs> Or like you just snowball. <laughs> You're like, wait, that that didn't. He didn't have four axes. Doesn't matter. I'm sure he had it in his hand. All right, let's add this. All right, so the frothing berserker is getting punished a little bit, uh, but he can still hold on to it if he hopes. If he, if he hopes to eat up the freezing trap with the unstable ghoul, for instance. 
You have to slam this, right? Yeah, slam a stable ghoul. And, uh, or do you not slam? Because it's irrelevant. I think you slam. You slam the jaguar okay. for sure. Because you want the ghoul to survive so that you can uh, get the ghoul frozen so you can attack fro frotting to the face. Yeah. And the ghoul frozen is still fine because it's going to be a useful AoE later. Yeah. It's pretty expensive, but there's going to be an AoE later that you can set up. You can even replay it to challenge the shredder if you want to. It's not that bad. If you attack with the ghoul, you have to replay it to protect the frothing berserker. Yeah, otherwise there's really no purpose to attacking with it. Like, to attacking anything, in fact. Other, the other line of play, you can play Nomish Inventor, see what you draw, and then pass, he attacks the ghoul, and then you use the Nomish to proc the freezing. But if you he has could, something else... You could use Patron, like, you, you attack with Frothing, you lose it, send it back to your hand, play Patron, smash yourself into the Shredder, and then lose the game from here on out, because you made a crappy play. Because <laughs> you just get, like, a 3-2 and a 3-3. That's definitely not the line of play to do in such a prestigious tournament. Alright, so apparently Patron number 2 gets picked up. That's one of the reasons why you don't keep Patron number 1. But I told you, I'm really curious how this goes for Zale. I never did, did it myself. Did you think that was uh, explosive? That huh. must have because his line of play indicated that he thought it was explosive trap, right? This looked awfully exactly like an explosive trap play. Yeah, but you scouted in you scouted them in the other games, and I think he went almost deck deck out, Jackie. Like he played the hunter like four times yesterday versus us. I think you know the two secrets are freezing, and if you know they are freezing, you never attack there. You just hold the ghoul. Hmm. Here is Jackie, just your arcing golem. Do it, Jackie. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you get punished by? Like second slam, second fire war axe. Not not even second fire war axe. If he tanks it again, so second slam. Yeah, your second slam is the only thing because it's gonna like get, allow him to remove your stuff without taking damage at all. This is already a really bad matchup. I think you just yolo as much as you possible shove it. in it. Okay. Yeah. Go you just all in. try all your outs. Well, I mean, Shocky is gonna be able to deal with the ghoul if it comes down to tank the trap. Okay, as the goes for the execute. I like the execute there. Ancient Watcher oh. is no help, but the RNB Cal allows him to punch for four. <laughs> <laughs> RNB Cal with a new battle cry from Gormok, deal four damage. Easy life. It's, re it's really funny because Ancient Watcher is the worst possible minion to get in every class, excepting the classes that run silences. Right. In Rogue, in Rogue it's actually even worse than having nothing because he can get oiled. Yeah, and then you, you kind of waste the, the buff and you never get anything done with it. Yeah. But in Hunter, when you have double owl in your deck, I think Ancient Watcher is pretty sick. And now Shocky is going to be able to remove both patrons using the Ancient Watcher if he wants to. Or he yeah, can he also just, just go. <laughs> Glaivezuka owl. No, you, you owl and Glaivezuka. You owl and Glaivezuka, of course. Yeah, yeah, probably. Easy. You, you can't do it in the other order. Oh man, this is beautiful. And I don't now. think I've ever seen anything quite like it. This is, this is magnificent. <laughs> it's a pretty unique scenario. Yeah, you can punish for 5 and kill the patron. Like, look at this! I can't even believe this Ancient Watcher! Shocky winning with the most passive card in the game, turning it into a phase tool. Definitely Shocky playing this deck, I can tell. I like that play actually more than trading. I really like that play. Yeah, it's, it's much more it's, aggressive. Your quick shot's gonna be mostly dead, right? Yeah, it's a really Shocky play that uh, shows why <laughs> he's such a good aggro player. Yeah. Keep the 5-5, five five. it's a low step body, right? Like, you have a load yeah. on the board that can attack repeatedly. Why and you already saw the execute. You already saw the execute, you already saw the slam. Like, how is he gonna deal with the 5-5? Five, 5-HP five? Five is really hard to deal with by Patron. And now Zale is still having the Patron that he kept in the starting hand. Exactly in the same spot. In the left hand, if the, in the left part of his hand. Yeah. Waiting to be activated. <laughs> uh, never lucky. Never activated. Do you Wait, play? do you play Gruel, Whirlwind, Balrage? Nah. The oh. play you can consider is Patron, Whirlwind, and then you just throw away your Patron just to survive. Because otherwise... Yeah. Otherwise, I don't see a line. He's gonna have... Okay, wait, is he hoping to find the... Like, a card draw with Balrage? Force his opponent to trade. He's trying to force his opponent to trade, but no one will trade here, will they? That's such an awful card for Zelle. Shaki can even go Owl, Arcane Golem, and push full face. 
Yeah, that's it. It's market. You got it. Like this is this is it. The moment of truth. Mm. One owl to rule them all. Arcane Golem kill command is off curve. If you owl it, you're only afraid that he can battle rage. But even if he battle rages, why can't he draw? Like double shield like, block. That's the worst. But then again, you still keep your board, so you just slow down his death. I mean, do you even know silence this? Because you'll need it against the ghoul that you sent back to his hand, right? Like, there's, you need to keep the alpha, the, the kill command, guaranteed lethal. Oh. Like, unless he's, yeah, he gets the armor smith. Yeah, I like this line too. I like the face. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, I like the way Chucky faces his problems in this game. Damn, that's smooth. <laughs> Now Zalani yes. needs to throw something from the Battle Rage. Uh, that's not a bad card, but it won't draw. He can clear. I mean, he, he might think he's alive, right? Like, you slam, you you trade, you armor up, and then you play something. How did you he, he double Krolta's Master? I think I saw him cutting armors if a Krolta's Master. Think about how it, how it would have been if those Krolls were armor smiths. Yeah, it would actually been... Like, it would allow him to live, actually. The double proof task armor up. He still goes for the winning line of play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely the winning line of play, but unfortunately for him, shocky has got the beast plus kill command plus hero power, which is exactly the lethal he needed, and he's got one mana ex excess that he doesn't even need to use here. He got a creeper too. Oh, yeah, kind of matter. like you earlier, except this time it matters. All right, so it turns out uh, shocky is going to give the equalization for Force and Boys. So even though Team Archon had the lead, now it's kind of back to status quo. We'll have to see who gets the... I, I mean, based on the lineups, is there anyone you'd assume like has a really weak deck that's going to get punished really severely by the entirety of the opponent's lineups? Uh, I need to or see the decks I, before. Right, the, I forgot what they... Bring up the, uh, I know bring it's up the usually... Lineups yet? Yeah, I know it's usually not that great to go 2-0, like Chucky did, because now his team risks being benched way more. And if they get benched, they can be easily countered, unless they have the classes perfectly distributed. Like, usually, the patron, if the patron player has also the worst class with the patron, you can afford him getting benched and stuff like that. Uh, Archon has a better win distribution, but uh, looking at the matchups... I don't know how good Sixos Paladin is now that Chucky won his games because his favorable yeah. matchups were, were versus Chucky. Yeah, and they're all gone now. Sixos is going to have to try to like pick up a, a win against something. I mean, he could still do it against the Shaman, right? Like, is that still possible? Um, I mean, he could still run into a Skaka. Hmm. It's still a very hard matchup. It's not as easy as Chucky's decks would have been. Chucky also runs No Unleash the Hounds in the Hunter deck. So the Paladin could just overextend for days. And he he also runs Consecration in the Paladin, so that was like super easy. And then the Agra Paladin Mirror, you probably win it because of the secrets. You can uh, manipulate the board with the get-downs. And uh, seeing that Sixo lost the best matchups, I don't see his Paladin in, in a really good uh, spotlight. And there's always a chance we've seen... Uh, the thing is, the deck that he's running is very polarized. It's a deck that has some really, really bad matchups at the moment. Like, unless it, until it gets refined. Like, I think the deck itself, the idea behind the deck. Like, Secret Paladin, I think, is a deck that's waiting to just break... Uh, like, just break the gates and let hell loose. What, I, what I'm wondering is, if it's not refined, is it even worth bringing, right? Because the type of deck that... Like, I, I can't fault him for bringing the deck... Uh, but what I wonder is whether or not it's a wise choice in a, in, when it's so untested, perhaps. Um, oh, it's a really risky choice, but we saw that from other teams, too. Like, yeah, we, we also have some Louise risky decks. Fist of Jarax's yeah, Zoo. Yeah, that too. Um, Firebat wants to face Oskaka's Shaman and Forson's Zoo with both his decks. But he doesn't really want to face the Freeze Mage and the Patron Warrior. Sixo doesn't wa really want to face every anything at all. But Shaman I mean, is pretty decent. The the tiebreakers don't really matter here, right? 
Like, it's, this is either you win the game and you move on, or you don't, and you're out. So the question of whether or not, like, at this point, the only thing that matters for Sixo is whether or not they're able to isolate his matchup. That's it. Like, are we able to take out, um, like, to, to let Forsen win with Freeze Mage and Warlock against our decks so that you can be guaranteed to maybe go up against Shaman? Hmm. Like, it's a pretty tricky situation, because it's really hard. Because in order for Sixo to get a good matchup, his teammates need to lose against Forsen twice. And well, you can, is... just, you can just beat Forsen, and then he still has his decks locked. You don't yeah, really you have, have to, to bench him, away. but you have to have them make that mistake. Yeah. Or you beat Forsen once, and then they'll, they won't send him out again, basically, yeah. I obviously think the better game plan for Archon is to just bench Forsen, then... Uh... Try, then how, how do you do that? Do you just like do you, do you bribe him so he just shows up twice in a row and like loses to your decks? Uh. Well, there is a big chance that you show up twice in a row because if you always go you one by target. one, you'll be predictable. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. Both teams have really hard decision picking the decks, and uh, yeah, there's no still... like, there's no like clear cut decision to make here, right? Like that's the thing that makes this so difficult. There's just, no clear-cut yeah. advantage for either team, I can tell. Yeah, just go take your die and roll it. Well, Farabad's gonna go up against the Freeze Mage from Forsen with his Rogue. Oh, the game's already underway. Well underway, actually. Wow. Oh, turn five. Get in the middle of this. Hmm. Okay, well, missing sorry the for early the delay, game. guys. We were we don't know which cards were played exactly. Uh, we had some problems with the uh, disconnections on the admin side. We'll try to resume and pick it up from here. So we we've missed out on definitely a few cards that were thrown away, like or played that just got lost. There's two secrets on the board. I have to assume mad scientists were played. Um, but then again, they might have just been hard casted. It's probably the only game I see from Forsen where he plays freeze mage and he doesn't draw his secrets. So I'm really looking forward to how this plays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're totally right. But the thing is, now with the Doomstar getting sapped, um, that's a pretty tricky spot to navigate because you have no way to really threaten anything. Like if you play Emperor, it's cute, it's good, it's also very good. Uh, but your opponent's hand is full, and if you're not removing this teacher, uh, it's only gonna get worse. Yeah, Firepath has also a lot of damage to push next turn. Yeah, like oil, crazy double amount. poison. It's a crazy amount of damage. Oh. Emperor falls down, it's gonna force a response, but I think Firebed will handle it very easily. No issue there. Yeah, just backstab and trade a bit. Oh, he can also like Blade Flurry now. Is Blade Flurry a better line than backstabbing? I'm actually wondering, because if you Blade Flurry, then maybe you're not able to do that to a bigger target later. And you have so much weapon damage in your hand right now that you could probably keep the Blade Flurry for when it's gonna remove a minion and maybe pop a secret, for instance. Hmm. It's really hard to say because Blade Flurry fits the curve perfectly, almost perfectly. And it's a really clean kill on the Emperor Torison without you taking damage. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he'll go for it. It looks like he's going to because if he if he caps this at 5 damage, then he's definitely aiming for crazy oil later. Uh, and he thinks this is good enough. And honestly, at this point it is. Even if a Flame Strike comes down, right, from Forsen, your teacher lives. So you're still getting another wave. Yep. Oh my god. And now Forsen draws all his minions. So when he doesn't draw his secrets, he draws all the minions. <laughs> and no spell. Exactly when he doesn't need them. That's right. That's exactly right. Huh? I like playing Wandom Sayer. You force him to deal with it. Oh, will and, he uh, even bother? Well, I, mean, I guess not? at this point he will. Because hmm. I'm Actually, looking at Firebat's hand and look at that burst. Like, look at the amount of damage sitting there. It's actually quite impressive. He can kill it very easily through a blade flurry and wipe his enemy board as well. There are some reasons to let the Doomsayer alive because you deny the Acolyte draws. But at the same time, having the 100% oil, you really want to push as much damage as possible and force him to have the answer. Giving force on one more draw shouldn't be a problem, I think, in this spot. Yeah, when you've got the Celsi deckhand on the back end uh, to use a second oil on too, like you know your damage is coming out like crazy next turn. And the turn after, and the turn after. Yeah, next turn he carries perfectly into Dagger Up, Deckhand, Oil, Eviscerate, if he needs to use all the damage. Hillbot uh, is a really interesting draw. 
Is it good enough? For this turn, I don't think so. I, I might think consider you... Alex, but... No, you just go Blizzard, don't say. And then you go Alex yourself, and then you go heal bot yourself, and you win, right? Unless I think the, fights. the double heal, no, you're right, the double heal really denies your opponent the ability to kill you twice, basically. Because um, they'll get one ice block, but then if you've blizzarded their entire board, unless they repopulate, like, massively. Like, a crazy play here from Firebat would be to top deck like, Lothab. Um, like, if you expect to get wiped off the board, it would do a lot of work, because you could guarantee to push. Now Tichek is also going to act against Firebat. If he hits the oil perfectly on the deck hand, he would have 13 damage. He just needs two right now. So, yeah. I mean, he's going to be able to just do whatever. Um, SI7 combo, ideally. Yeah. Do you have uh, enough it's... to kill a Doomsayer and proc the block without uh, Actually, getting lucky? Because uh, that's what you want. No, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it because if you if you eviscerate, then you're two off. You know, you're still two man, like three man. You're one man off basically. You need just a tiny bit more damage. Uh, you actually, can't you use can, a South you Sea. Can. You'd have to you go for South Sea. Uh, you can with South Sea. You just uh, eviscerate and weapon the mm -hmm. Doomsayer. It doesn't matter if the South Sea is buffed. You still proc the block. So he's gonna go for it. Yeah, yeah. You kill the Doomsayer and you proc the block 100%. No matter where the oil lands. I think this is definitely the play. Does it help it that much if it hits on the deck hand? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter at all, actually. Or I cannot even have extra in this spot, right? You see, they don't. No, work it's yet? The, it, well, it's the typical case of when you're freeze mage and you're trying to get, you know, the survival. You're in survival mode, but you have no secrets, no mad scientists on the board. So it's, yeah. And what can you do? I mean, heal bot. You have to heal, heal bot. You have to ping, and you have to frost bolt. So that's giving you quite a few plays that keep you alive, in theory. There's going to be go what, four on the dagger, four, five, six, seven. There's seven in your opponent's like board if you heal bot, frost bolt, ping. He could also go for the vintage play of frost bolting the mad scientist to get a secret out. <laughs> that is so old. <laughs> that is such an old reference. Yeah. Oh man, it was a great play though. I mean, it still works. The thing is, does it win you the game? Because I mean, when he did it, it mattered. In this case, it just doesn't. Like you it's get obviously a not as, Yeah, it's obviously not as good as going heal bot and just frost yeah, yeah, of course. teacher. Into the game. But it's a flashy, interesting play. It, the thing is, it's gonna save you once in a while. It is a type of play that will be helpful, but it's not going to be uh, useful every time. All right, Firebat so, needs one damage. Yeah, one off lethal, and there it is. Sometimes There's the damage he was looking for. And that's gonna be it. Forsen will go down. He doesn't seem happy about that. <laughs> oh, poor Forsen. Well, I wouldn't be happy either. Like if Never you saw lucky. that. I also yeah. had some facial expressions. Yeah, you did. You you most definitely. If you go watch. Um, like the the poster seemed like it was accompanying you in the in the disbelief. Like the Doctor House poster or whatever it is. The face is good. All right, so yeah. that's gonna be three two in favor on Team Archon. Shocky has a check mark on Force and Boy's side, and Force and if he goes out again, could get benched. So maybe they'll decide to send out a Skaka. And if they do, then Team Archon knows that, and maybe knows that, and then he can try to target it. Maybe Force and Boys will randomize and go again with Force and. And then Team Archon's mind games will do nothing unless they win. Yeah, it's a really complicated situation. I'm not sure. If it goes to 6 0, having to win with a Paladin, that will be so heartbreaking if he loses again like four times in a row. Like, I think there were decks in this uh, stage 2 playoff, phase 2 playoff, sorry, that were more deserving to go 0 6 or 0 5 than his secret body, which is actually a really solid deck. It's more solid than other decks that were played. And actually won, even from the first try sometimes. No shots, of course. Well, it's looking like... I mean, this is a patron from Oskaka. You got a patron from Zalei. If you run into Mage... 
you're still okay. It's going to be a long game. Zelay is very good at playing that matchup. He's actually, the t turn one, he already knows where he wants to go. Like, have you ever watched him play that matchup? Because you basically see Zelay go from turn one into fatigue mode. Like, he's already playing the long term fatigue. But with that armor smith, that's really lowering his win rate. Because you can't get that huge armor up turn anymore. Yeah, I was trying to learn the matchup better for myself, and I was watching Zale and uh, Life Coach play it. I think they they played the best. Mm -hmm. I look forward to see Zale versus Oskaka Patreon Mirror because I think that matchup is one of the most interesting matchups in Hearthstone. Not only be because it's one of the most played on ladder, but because it's uh, so in depth that every single mistake and loss can lose you the game. Or do you? I saw your match against Kranich. Okay. Where he shield slammed his own patron and slammed one of his own patrons, and you were exactly one patron on the board off lethal with the frothing berserker in HPL, I think. Well, that um, happens. It's no, but just, it was uh, like it was a really good read on his part. But I thought he would only kill one. So, like when you say it's in depth, that's the kind of play that makes like a huge difference because you almost had him. Like you had him on the ropes. It was it was a really well uh, like you you really designed your your lethal. Nicely, basically. It's too bad that you read into it, but it was a great play. So yeah, I think the, that's one of the cooler matchups for sure. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Hunter versus Hunter in a way. The thing is that Hunter versus Hunter is... Like, once someone gets a foothold on the board, sometimes it's just really hard to remove them. Like, they, they get a high main, you don't have the freezing trap, well, you know, just... Goodbye. So it's all about timing those things properly. Whereas patrons sometimes... The games drag on and on until somebody draws their combo, and even when they do, if they don't kill you right away, you can counter kill them. Mm -hmm. Now I see the warrior versus mage that you talked about. Yeah, I'm really curious how they both play it out. I know Neria is the freeze mage player that uh, likes this matchup a lot, and I don't think any other freeze mage player likes this matchup. And of course, every warrior likes this matchup a lot. So let's I see mean, how it goes. The only reason I could see a, a like a freeze mage like this is like you know Thais doesn't like Malagos and freeze mage, right? So you've got on the other end maybe Nairia likes it because I think against Patron it's one of the better ones where you they have the two executes, but if you get the Malagos to stick, that's a third thread they can't handle. And if somehow you're still alive, that's gonna make the difference. In a typical sense, if the warrior is going for a fatigue strategy right off the bat, I think it's a bad matchup for the mage no matter what. Like, if, it's all about, I think, the, how the patron decides to approach it. But without Armorsmith for Zelay, if that's the case, then that's going to make his win rate against Freeze Mage a lot worse. Because you rely on those huge roll in turns. Yeah, it's very difficult without running Armorsmith, but as you said, Zelay knows how to play it. Like, I found out the way you can lose this matchup is by just trying to rush them down, and then they have Flame Strike, and then they Alex themselves, and that's how they win. So, uh, okay, so you force them to try to pop your block at the last second, and then you just restore everything, and you're back to... Yep. Also, the Patron needs to draw until he gets the removal, and then he needs to stop completely. Uh, the best case scenario would actually be drawing less than until you get the removal, and then getting and the removal getting... exactly when uh, you, need right. the, you need it, yeah. Top decking it and stuff. You need to draw as little as possible, but Zale is going for double Acolyte of Pain because he doesn't really have any other option right now. It's a pretty good one. I mean, the, the mage can't really deny that unless they decide to go for a Doomsayer play. And they might have a much better Doomsayer later in the game with a Nova on a patron board, say. Yeah, I think it's a good line to just go for the Acolytes to get the draws that you need to get. And then probably never use Battle Rage if you can, or use it for one, just a cycle. But yeah, this game will take a while. Forsen, yep. on the other hand, tries to draw a lot himself. But he gets closer to fatigue by every ping on the Acolyte he does. I mean, as I said, like some people play this matchup so conservatively when it comes to drawing. They just don't want to draw. They don't want to be the first to initiate the fatigue race. But if Forsen has info on Zale, you know, cutting the... Um, the, the armor smith, I mean, that's a good reason enough, I think, to maybe start drawing yourself. Because, you know, if it comes to it, he's not going to win by a huge margin. I think now it's still favored has... in the patron, however. Go ahead. Now Zalin has the chance to just play the Nomish and throw away the Acolyte. Or 
he has the other option of uh, trying to milk as many draws as possible from the Acolyte of Pain. Hmm, I like this play actually, it's interesting. Saving the Acolyte on both sides. Like, as long as your opponent draws, you can afford to draw too, right? Yeah, as long as yours is not getting denied, you can just let him draw. As long as you can equal, like, equalize the draw count. Um, yeah. You don't really want to be like four turns behind your opponent because then the fatigue actually matters a lot. But if you're like one draw behind, it's probably okay. As the warrior that has like a hero point that is twice better than mages. That's a decent turn to pull off the block. I don't think Force and Runs Pyroblast, and that's really important in this matchup, is one of the best ways to just destroy our warrior's armor. Well, that's the thing, right? If like Pyroblast is the other the other card that you can play, I think Malagos and Pyroblast are the two interchange like interchangeable spots. Um, I'm not sure what Force is running. That's not those two, uh, because very quarter. often, yeah, that's probably like the double draw from the two drop. It's kind of hard to um, to make a push without those cards, because your late game ends up being you know Archmage, Alexstrasza, and those get killed. All right, so if you he makes patrons, he just yeah, that's it. Uh, I think he just he did. just makes force him to have it, forces him to have it. I mean, if you don't attack here and you don't pop it, then you're probably hoping to get some kind of a frog in play. Because I mean, Blizzard is needed here, no questions asked, or like a Nova Doomsayer play. Nova Doomsayer is probably better because if he executes the Doomsayer, it's actually good for you. You get a lot of value from Lantonidas if you play him afterwards. And you can also just have the flame strike next turn. Let the pain wow, Force is going for the draw here. He's looking for that flame strike. Because he's not forced. Wait, wait, he's going for the trade? Alright, sure. I guess. So that that's something I didn't expect to see. But maybe the idea is to get the patrons low enough on hell that Blizzard can maybe wipe most of them off. That's happened before. If the board is full enough, sometimes they don't get to replicate. Yeah, also there's like no way to die right now. Yeah, he's way yeah. away from dying. He's just not under pressure enough. Yeah, I like that play from Forsen. He holds on the removal, and that's obviously important. Like, he gives Ali the chance to overextend, but the Freeze Mage usually has the Flame Strike on turn 7, so Zale will not overextend here. Oh, no. Then what does he do? Does he try to give Force a lot of draws, maybe even potentially overdrawing him? Not really. I think he just trade one patron and go the go for face with the other ones, armor up and pass the turn. Force went for the mind game. He gives Zali the chance to overextend. Very interesting. I think the threat of a card is like sometimes just better than the card itself. Well not better, but as good as the card itself in many cases. Yeah, that's why you just have to ignore it sometimes, but uh, sometimes you can just uh, not play into it because it's just really bad to overextend. Now, Fortune is in a pretty good spot because Zale only armored up once this whole matchup. He didn't, yeah. he, he didn't really have the opportunity to do so. That's a pretty big push. Is that a pretty big push? If you get, oh, uh, because the, the, if the ones on the board could attack, would it change anything? You really need Emperor Thorsten to make like a massive push soon, but you never have those patrons on the board again. What now? Warsong, Frothing, Whirlwind, Spawns, one, one patron. patron, that's it. It's not and enough to do another, anything. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not going to do anything at all. I mean, you could kill the Doomsayer, but if you want to do that, then there's a much easier way. Maybe that's the play, actually. I wonder. I think the play is to just kill Doomsayer somehow, no matter how you do it. Yeah, because... it's, it looks it looks fine because you need to push for that fraud thing. I I saw from Zale's early game that he wasn't gonna go for that fatigue line of play that he usually does. Um, because if he if he'd wanted to, then he'd been armoring up every single turn, and he hasn't. So he's going for the damage like the damage approach. And he knows that one is a bit tougher. <laughs> Force with a thank you. That's one execute out of the way. Yeah, he grabs the Talnos. Alright, pretty clean clear. 
I like the way both players played it. They played through their outs. Zale had to do that play. He was forced to do that play. If you don't do it, he, the freeze match play gets uh, so much uh, advantage. And at the same time, Force and baited uh, having Flame Strike two turns ago, and then he ended up having Talmos Blizzard this turn. What? Do you think Zale will just go for it? He plays he tries goal. to set up. All right, so he's trying to set up some kind of whirlwind effect somehow. As funny as it sounds, I think forcing his favorite to take this game. Well, without the huge armor lead, I think you're right. Like the huge armor lead is usually what differentiates the mage from the. Uh... Oh wow! What a crazy emperor here for forcing. Wow. Sometimes lucky. Well, to be fair, Zali doesn't run Armor Smith. And that's the best card in the Freeze Mage matchup. Right. I mean, Shield Block's not too bad. He's still not quite out of this yet. Does he run a single Shield Slam or not? I'm not too sure. Mm, I don't think you run Shield Slam if you only run one Shield Block. And I think he only runs yeah. one Shield Block. Because I saw double ghoul and that he doesn't have the slots to play double ghoul, double shield block, and shield slam. It's a very tough spot for Zale. Battle is like the last card you want to see. It's the most useless one yeah. in this matchup. Well, the thing least. is, you don't even want to draw in the first place. You don't draw, you don't want to draw very much. I think if Zale picks up the win, it's going to be on the back of like a crazy frothing push. But the question is, even if you push and you pop the block, right? Even if you get it... Um, can you actually pop it again? That's always the question you have to ask, and often enough, it doesn't work out. Well, he uses the third whirlwind effect. Now he only has one whirlwind in the. He wants to draw deck. the emperor, probably. No, no, he armors up. Wow. With Forcing only one whirlwind to his here. Yeah. With with only one whirlwind remaining for Zalei, I don't think he can make a big frothing push. Archmage is going to be super happy to come out eventually. Usually you play it after Alex Straza. You just Alex him and then you go Archmage, get a ton of fireballs. For yeah, he's got, he's got play, time on his hands, I think. The only way for some plays Archmage right now is if he calculates he has enough damage to kill him only from the fireballs. Just like not even needing Alex Straza. <laughs> that would be really interesting to see if a Freeze Mage can kill the Patron Warrior without playing Alex Straza. He's adding up the numbers on the fingers. Yeah, it's only 35 with just... If he gets all the fireballs and the warrior never armors up again. So he'd have to top deck more burn. So yeah, I think Alex Straza is still going to be uh, important. Yeah, he found out he doesn't have enough damage, so he goes for the safer line of play. Oh, never mind. And here He's we go. He's going for it. He's gonna also, get a you, pretty substantial amount of fireballs anyway, so that's pretty sweet. You saw one execute being used by Zale. You don't really expect... Do you really expect the other one? I think you might because he used it pretty easily on the Doomsayer. I don't think he would have used it unless he had another one to back it up. So by playing like this, he converted the Frost Nova into a fireball, which I... That, that's six less damage than what I looked at initially. So that's actually giving him potential lethal over three turns, basically. Is it enough with shield block? I don't think so. No, with shield block, it's not going to be enough. No. Yeah, but whenever no. there's force and sees the shield block, he will just wait for Alex Straza. Of course. So Zale needs to kind of bait it out and not play the shield block. Okay. Never mind. I actually think the play was uh, Zale just executing the Antonidas and then waiting for Forsen to use the fireballs aggressively and then playing the shield block. Just so. To force him to waste the damage. Yeah, without having Alex. But at the same time, he doesn't know if Forsen has Alex or not. But I think that in this spot, if he has Alex, you already lose the game. So I think the better play is to just hope he doesn't have Alex Straza and hope he uses his removal, uh, his uh, damage before you use the shield block. But going for shield block first will just uh, make Forsen not play fireballs, I think. Unless he calculated some other obscure details. 
And now he just goes for the save line of play. Waits for Alex Straza. Of course, he used the fireball to the armor because that doesn't influence Alex Straza. Exactly. Because you remove the armor, it doesn't matter like what Alex does. I remember the days when that was the case. Oh my god, was that aggravating. And uh, now he's considering if Ping is better than Mad Scientist. He just has because he needs to get uh, just to remove the armor because if you top like Alex, you're putting his opponent down to 15, right? Yeah, you so want every I single guess... point of damage. I mean, if you play Mad Scientist, what you're doing is you're giving your opponent the ability to get a free patron off of it, and you're denying yourself the ability to get the second ice block off of it if eventually it comes to that. Um, it's not a huge play necessarily, but it's enough. We see the second show block from Zale. Is that yep. enough to like get him out of reach? I don't think so. If we see Alex Straza coming soon, uh, Alex Straza maybe. 20, 22. Well, the question is how does he kill Alex? Because at this point, it's not even like I'm not even too worried about the fireballs. He can be out of reach of those. But with Alex Straza being an 8 8, um, and he's already used his two executes, that's not looking too good. Okay, now Zale goes for I just lose to Flame Strike play. Yeah, I'm all in. I, I can't really make a push at any point. I don't have any more AoEs to make this worth it. After four some Flame Strikes, Zale will have one more Patron, one more Frothing. One more Warsaw Warsaw. Commander in the deck. And that's it, right? Yeah, I think so. You got Alex uh, Straza. I think you do you flame strike for safety anyway. You can remove some of armor course. in the meantime. Go for the ice barrier. You pick Every one. single time you do this play. Yeah. Now, like, you no way you're gonna lose. Yeah, now you can lose. Now basically win. Right? Unless Ale has some secrets stacked out into the patron. Kazan Mystic twice. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not even that would do it, probably. Yeah. He's in a really bad spot. He doesn't have a way to deal with Alex Straza. He doesn't have a way to proc the block and eventually kill Forsen. I think that's the big. I think Alex Straza is really the biggest threat because having had to use the execute so early. What did he even use it on? I remember it was on the Archmage, and then you had another one on the Doomsayer. Yes. So. So the way Zale wins right now is Force and not having Alex Straza and then him top decking uh, as soon as possible, frothing Berserker and Warson Commander, and then proccing the block and then having another weapon to kill Forsen. It's a really unrealistic situation. We already know that Forsen has Alex Straza and he's gonna yep. instantly play it. Patience can't charge yet. Emperor Thorsten has no help. I mean, Battle Rage could get you the Warsaw. That is would allow you enough? to kill Alex Straza. Say what? Is that good enough? He's not efficient killing Alex Straza. Well, I mean, you, you, you would have to face tank her. <laughs> and then you die to the thousand fireballs you saw go up in his hand earlier. But as he spawned them, you saw that you were further and further away from the win the moment Alex Straza hit the board. Yeah, I don't think there's any draw for Zale to get him out of this situation. Yeah, I think this is a better play than just hoping you draw Warson Commander. You also get that armor up in. But even if you armor up, it doesn't really matter. Alex hitting me in the face is gonna be enough to potentially. For sure, the win friendly again. BM, but the BM is going to equalize the score at least between both teams. <laughs> yeah, very friendly. You, you don't believe it's friendly when it's coming from Forsen? Yeah, of course it's friendly. It's only joke. It's only joke. Why you have to be mad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Forsen just goes for the damage to the face. Yeah, there's no reason not to. I mean, the only way he was going to lose is uh, if he didn't have Alex ever. Like, the only way for him to lose this was for like Alex to be the last card at the bottom of the deck. Zale is laughing right now. He knows he cannot do anything in this situation. Where is the armor smith when you need it, right? Outside of the deck. He's gonna try to kill himself. Committing the pseudo coup. That's pretty sweet. Well, Force is gonna get, not gonna get the lethal. Zale is gonna get it on himself. So he's gonna equalize the series 3 to 3. So even though Team Archon had the early lead, 
Force and Boys are doing pretty well, but see, this is a position where Force and Boys has one less deck uh, from Forsen, right? So now we just have to eliminate the Warlock, and finally the Paladin can play. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that was the plan all along, right? Just yeah, throw in your, your bad matchups and lose to Forsen, and then Sixo can go in. Yeah, I, I still think, obviously, that uh, just benching Forsen is a better game plan for Archon. But if that doesn't work, just let Forsen win twice and beat Oskaka. Right. You can't Oskaka actually do... What's, Oskaka is also like the player that is most likely to go on tilt if he has to win the final games. But Archon has six, so on the other side with the Paladin, I would really love uh, to see them going uh, head to head for uh, their teams, basically, because they're representing the, their teams. Yeah. And the thing is, when you're the weak link in a format like this, for instance, if you feel like you're the weak link, you're playing for your entire team in a huge... And these matches are really big, right? Because this is elimination. We're way past the whole, oh, let's see who makes it to, you know, phase two, gets out of redemption. These these teams are just getting eliminated. Whoever loses this, loses their chance at hundreds of thousands of dollars, basically, in prizes. So, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, you guys will have to nail it tomorrow as well. I'm guessing that's... <laughs> like, you've been on the roller coaster ride, then, like, how does it feel? Like, how does it feel going from a really good spot to a poor one and then kind of making it back? Um, I have to ask you, because I didn't well, really... We take it as a team, like when we prepare the decks, we do it together, we practice together, and we think of the decks together. So that means we take the wins together and we take the losses together. If some player loses a lot of games in a row, it's uh, not only his fault, because the decks weren't uh, only made by himself. It's not like we just uh, meet once and be like, oh, I play this, I play this, you play whatever you want, and uh, let's just play some Hearthstone. We actually <laughs> had like a really good strategy. Right. And we're like Pokemon practicing Masters. and stuff. So yeah, we are just taking everything uh, okay. We not we don't flame each other and we try to stay strong even in the toughest uh, spots. And I think that will be enough to qualify us. If not, so be it. All right, you're taking this pretty well. I find yeah, that's a competitive player mindset. That's great. It's great to see that. Honestly, uh, a lot of players are very emotional about their wins and losses. I know you display a lot of emotion, but I think down like deep down you're still. Accepting of like RNG variance hits. Yeah, I display emotion, but I don't really care about the outcome. Like after one, after between half a minute and one minute, I'm just okay and fresh to go again. Wow, Sixo bringing out the Paladin and Askaka. Let's hope uh, this is not the Worry. warrior. Oh, okay. I played this matchup quite a lot today, actually. I go played the uh, deck similar to Sixos, and I think it's better than the Agro Paladin Wars versus Patron. Just because you have these interesting secrets. So, okay. Oscar has the fire war axe. Yeah, Again. that's uh, <laughs> that's already really tough. Like it's pretty much the uh, the most awful start. I would love to see some uh, percentages on how many times the warrior has. Uh, the Ninety fire war percent, axe. you said. Ninety percent. That's what I. That's what I heard earlier. I'm gonna stick to it. Math cannot disprove this. <laughs> It has been 100% today in Archon Lake, to be honest, so... <laughs> You're right. I'm, I'm not saying anything, but... Blizzard, you might want to check your algorithms and the weight you give to that War Axe. It might be heavier than you think. This is coming out every single time now. It would be even funnier if Osaka plays only one fire, War Axe and still gets it. I think Competitive Spirit is the worst secret to get early game. It's so good with Master for Battle, but it's so bad versus uh, everything yeah. else. Yeah, it's very good mid game, really, I think. It's actually really good when you get um, the. Um, how was it called? The six mana guy that gives you all the secrets? The Mysterious Challenger, yeah. The, yeah, the one yeah, that's forcing your bite to deal with it. They all have synergy. The secrets you get from that guy, you get uh, get down, and then after your opponent kills the get down, you you proc the avenge. At the same time, you proc the redemption, and at the same time, you proc the competitive spirit at the end of the spirit, turn. Yeah. So you just get a huge board. Well, that, that's what's uh, interesting I find about um, like it, I remember when the paladin secrets were leaked. The dream was to have noble sacrifice and avenge and have redemption. That was the dream, but like you couldn't get it to work because you could never draw those secrets. And Mad Scientist wasn't good enough to make that competitive. But now that we have that card, I think there's a chance that the deck uh, becomes a bit better. We'll see. So the one ones also, here are exactly a big threat. What's up? Also, Scientist is not that great in this Paladin deck because 
he's only worth it and like really nice when you get two mana secrets out of your deck. Uh, but with the one mana party secrets, you don't really want to get them out of the deck. I think Challenger is enough. And Sixto recognized that and he built a powerful version without Scientist. So his deck is actually not that bad as people, as people think. But of course, it's a really hard matchup to win. It's already looking pretty bad, even if competitive spirit triggers, right? Like, if you remove all the 1-1s, one you waste the competitive spirit completely, because it's just going to trigger on two minions. On one minion, in fact, in this case. Um, so it's really rough. Yeah, we'll start if he picks up really a weapon. Well. If he picks up a weapon, maybe. Oh god, this hand from 6 -0. So many secrets in that deck. I mean, they're not bad now. It's yeah. actually pretty good. Shove them all. Yeah, you attack and play all the secrets, go for face. Not on my watch. Maybe trade? Nah. Nah, nah, we don't trade. You want the Divine Shield with the uh, competitive spirit because Osaka has to attack himself. What is the best draw for 6 0? Divine Favor and even Mysterious Guy is pretty good, right? It's alright. The thing is, I feel like Oskaka's mid game is so much stronger right now than Xixo. Like, no matter what he's played here, unless Xixo top deck's like a crazy swing card, it's not really gonna work. Like, well, does he even play the... those, uh, like, does he even play the Silver Hand region, for instance? He plays Kings. And okay. if he gets the, if he gets the Venge on the dude, and then he top decks Kings, I think that is pretty good. But. Whenever Osaka gets executed, he can just execute the Divine Shield in guy because he's damaged. It doesn't matter that he has the Divine Shield on. Yeah. So that's also like a drawback. But we know he doesn't have execute right now, but Sixo can think any of anything. So let's see how the Avenge goes. It's a really important Avenge here. Maybe even game deciding Avenge. We'll see. He missed. Well, he's gonna be able to kill it and take only five as retaliation. Sixo at least can take care of the armor smith. If this two one can get buffed by kings, as you mentioned, that could be a really big deal. As long as the uh, as long as the two one doesn't get killed by execute, he's somewhat okay. Oh man, that's such a weird secret to play here. Like it does nothing. I don't think Osaka will go for patron. I mean, I'd play Patron and pop the 2-1. He might be afraid that 6 has uh, the secret that makes the Patron 1 HP. Oh, and then he gets destroyed. No. Really? He knows 6 had the secret last turn right, and he right. chose He's to play the other two secrets. Right? Hmm. That's yeah, a good point. That's, a good, that's point. a good point. If he's afraid of that, then definitely. And if you yeah. set up the ghoul, you also potentially get even more. Oh, well, that's... That's perfect. Having the whirlwind, it's enough to kill uh, both minions. Also, he has the ghoul, so he has even an overkill. I don't see six so good in this game. Will Does he even have the top deck that gets him out of this? Um, I, after the whirlwind effect, like because there's gonna be like the ghoul effect for one, and then there's gonna be the whirlwind and the AOE from that spite. Not only is it gonna spawn patrons, but it's also gonna kill your entire board. Well, this turn he could have top decked uh, the mysterious guy, and then he would have a pretty decent state. He drew so many secrets, though. I, I think I think maybe the, the the sweet spot for a deck like this is maybe like six secrets instead of the, the whole nine, because that's a third of your deck in a mulligan that's just kind of average, if not mediocre. I think the sweet spot is playing the best eight ones, maybe seven. And just hoping you either get them early game with your minions to combo pretty efficiently, or just from the mysterious, and just uh, not, yeah, not drawing into challenger, basically, and uh, not drawing into redemption unless you have an Argent Squire or a mini bot. Like if you get a Venge early on and you have a board, it's actually really good. Same with uh, get down. Does he put six Patriots on the board? There's a reason not to. Consecration, I guess. Because he can flood the board with Patriots and then you end up... Well, you're gonna have two of them not being able to spawn. Alright, it doesn't bother. Yeah, I don't really need... Oh, Consecration. <laughs> Talking about it. Sisa is still in a really, really bad spot. 
I mean, Oxcalco could literally just attack with those patrons and never play anything else and armor up, and that's it. And that will how eventually many turns, be game. How many turns does it take him to make the game? If he plays the the armor smith whirlwind, that's gonna be pretty much next turn. He needs to whirlwind because if he doesn't whirlwind, Sixo can attack the weapon into the free free and then consecrate, mm -hmm. and then he, his board is dead. But if he goes for whirlwind, he gets a lot of armor, he gets himself out of reach, and he gets four patrons back. And these four patrons are enough to win next turn. He can even drop the acolyte. Yeah, I like this play from Oskaka. This way he also punishes Sixo even more if Sixo would have had the Divine Favor. And we see the Repentance, which is probably the worst secret yeah, in the deck. Yeah, probably, probably the... I mean, I, you have to cut Repentance, I feel. I mean, I'd keep Redemption every day. Like, Redemption, Avenge, and... I noble think Sacrifice. No, well, Noble Sack is good insofar as you get it. I find through Mysterious Challenger most of the time. I think Competitive Spirit is probably overall a bit better, depending on the, how you build the deck, of course. Mm. Um, I, well, I would say you have a, to play one spirit. I think one spirit is better and just double Noble Sacrifice. But it depends sure. on the play that sounds, that sounds good. That sounds uh, that sounds about right. I think the secret deck is definitely going to be coming up and optimized soon enough. So Xixo loses again with the secret paladin deck. Let's hope it doesn't come to him. Like it doesn't come down to him just losing to every deck from Fortune Boys. Oskaka got his warrior out of the way. There's a shaman left for him, and Forsen still has his warlock, which are the only two decks that we need to see them win with. Uh, and they're going to have to face off against. I mean, the entire lineup left from Team Archon. Do you think Team Archon will just throw Xixo out again and hope that he wins? Because if he doesn't win, then it basically doesn't matter? Or will they still try to narrow it down to the Shaman? I think it's very difficult no matter what. Archon was in a really good spot, but now for some boys is in a really, really insane position. Like, Zoo is not really their best deck. I definitely disagree with running Gormok in Zoo. I think Gormak is a really overrated card, and even in the decks that can spawn the board fully, I still think you have better options than running a legendary that is very situational. But other than that, Zoo is more consistent than the way Sixo build Agro Paladin. And uh, Zoo can also steal a win from Patron. Right. Versus Freeze Mage is really hard. Um, so Freeze Mage beats Zoo, loses to Mech Shaman. Paladin should uh, lose to Zoo. And beat, beat Shaman. Shaman, yeah, probably most and of the Patreon time. Patron can beat everything and lose to everything. Like, I, I I can see Patron being pretty bad versus the Shaman because the Shaman is really fast. And versus Zoo, I think it's very close to 50 50 because Zoo is very fast too. So, well, yeah, it, it's a different because, you know, like we keep saying, okay, so Patron keeps aggro in check, right? But Patron also loses to some styles of aggressive decks. Not all of them, but some styles of them, which are very, you know, tempo-based. Say Zoo, that's a great example. They have sticky minions that can rush you down from hand very fast. Um, whereas if you go from, like, for a face hunter, they run out of steam too fast. Like, it's a very different type of aggressive deck. So yes, Patron does keep aggro in check, uh, but there are some archetypes, and I think Zoo is probably the, the best example of that, that keep Patron uh, on its toes as well. I think Meshawan is actually a better example. Because okay. uh, if you go another turn into Zapomatic, Patron needs right. a slam. If you go Coin Zapomatic, Patron needs the Fire War Axe. And even if they have it, you can just keep playing Max, keep playing Max, keep playing Max, and eventually you'll be in a good spot. So we see Archon got a good matchup right now, the Pali versus Shaman, and we were talking about this all night. Let's see how it goes. Well, this is the matchup I've been waiting for all day, pretty much. I've just wanted to see this uh, secret deck work out. Looks like Oskaka's got himself a Cogmaster opener, which is pretty much the only one drop he runs, so that's a pretty decent pickup. Uh, Tuscar Totemic always spawns a 3-4. That's, uh, that's a fact. And Sixo got a really good hand. Secret Keeper yep. turn 1, Argent Square Revenge turn 2. I think being Oskaka, you probably keep the Cogmaster and the Rock Biter. Because you need the Rogue Biter to answer a turn 1 Secret Keeper from your opponent. You just cannot afford that to get out of hand. Um, now he considers keeping Tasker Totemic, which is a really strong card to follow it up. If he knows he'll get a 2-drop in the next 3 draws by merely getting the Shredder, he can keep the other 3 cards. Because he would go Cogmaster, Coin, Rogue Biter into a 2-mana mech, into Tasker, that's like the dream. But what's the chance of getting I'd, I'd a 2-mana mech? Yeah, I'd probably throw the Shredder and just try for that 2-mana mech right now. 
Right. Or you can just for the Tusker and the Shredder and give yourself better chances at, at the Tumana Mech. But I think you just for the Shredder and, and hope you get it. Because it's so much better to have the Tusker as a follow-up on turn 3. Yeah, and what if you don't really? What if you don't need like like from his perspective? What if you don't need that rock biter in the end, um, and then you can just coin out the tusker on turn two? Hmm. Yeah, no, he's never like. There's no way that lives. There's no way this lives. Yeah, rock biter for sure. The question is, it is if you play cog monster. And now in this spot, you don't play cog monster. Just rock biter and coin into tusker totemic, or maybe you play double cog monster next turn for whatever reason. We'll see. Which one is really? <laughs> Yeah, th I'd be surprised though, but there's a possibility that he tries to go for that. If, if nothing came down from, from 6 0, uh, he might try it out. Alright. Repentance. A I really like Repentance. Tuscar. I really like the Repentance because you have Master for Battle. But at the same time, it can also go wrong. Hmm, actually, I like it. I like it very much from 6 0. It's a good follow-up. It follow all depends up. on what that totem is. It always depends what the Tuscar Totemic brings. And like this card, I've I've had a little bit of discussion with some people about it because you know how Animal Companion gives you a 33% RNG and you can get like a crazy Wolf Rider off of it, like a 4-2 a charge. Tuscar Totemic has a huge variance rate, and the times where you just coin it out and get totem golems are so sick that it makes the game really swingy very early. Like it kind of does what Animal Companion does, but worse when it works. Yeah, but Shaman was already a really bad class, right? And he ain't a good card. But the funny thing is that Mech Shaman was not that bad, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. if Mech Shaman needed this card. <laughs> so, so Shamans are just gonna start playing Tuscar Totemic and Mech, and just never mind mid range. We're out of this. Never mind Totem Shaman. Why need that? Well, you still might make Shaman and also run Tusker. I think it's like yeah, a really it's, good card. It's a card you, I, I would play. It's kind of like Murloc Knight and Pally. I'd play that everywhere. Oh. Not in Agro Pally, of course. But. Yeah. It's, a <laughs> it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Ostkaka made a pretty good read, maybe, on 6 0. It looks like it, at least. Now, Six was considering, I... do I muster or do I avenge any hero power? I think there's no reason not to uh, use a muster here. Mm, I think there are reasons to go hero power avenge and trade into the 1-1. One -one. Isn't that too risky in the case of an earth shock? Like, don't you get too punished for being slow about it? You get destroyed by earth shock, but does he run earth shock? Oskaka? Yeah, but I mean, there's less chances of a lightning storm than an earth shock, I think, right? Lightning Storm is like 0% or 1%. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm saying. The, uh, the odds it's might like be more in your favor. The card you don't want to play is like really hard to feed cards in the new Mech Shaman because you don't really have slots. You cannot afford to run a, a really situational card. You want to run good powerful minions and top decks. Like damage yeah. top decks. That's it. That's how you play Mech Shaman. And try to hit that face as much as possible. So what do you think we'll see here from Oskaka? I mean, he could just go for the Coin Shredder. Um, but the fact that that's weak to Noble Sacrifice, like really weak to Noble Sacrifice, might make it so he doesn't want to bother with that. Um, but if he goes for like Mech Warper's Appomatic, that's kind of weak to a True Silver play. Like every play that he takes feels like it's a little subpar, depending on what your opponent's holding. I think putting most HP on board is uh, the best play. And you okay. go for face all the time. You need to push as much as possible. Oh, he trades? Interesting. He thinks he gets the edge over time against uh, a paladin. Because his minions are usually bigger. Against this paladin especially. Like Unless Six will change something, your minions are going to be usually bigger. But they can overwhelm you pretty fast. Yeah, now being Six, you just uh, Archer Protector Revenge, trade into the... Zapomatic and go the, for the face with the others. No reason to damage the uh, the mech warper. Reporting for duty. Yeah, I don't really. Never mind, Avenge. Just flood the board. He's about to lose his board. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to fall behind on it. I think that's actually a pretty good call, because the board, like having too many minutes on the board, is going to be the issue for the shaman going like down the line, because he only has spot removal. Like unless he picks up a doom hammer, he's going to kill one minute at it, like at most. Uh, with a single spell or a single action. So you're forcing him to spread his actions for removal and they're all going to be inefficient. Yeah, but at the same time you want to get rid of the two Avenges that you have in the hand and the only way to get rid of both is playing one now over the hero power or maybe over the protector, I don't know. 
I am not sure if I like that line because you know Osaka is gonna trade into the two two, right? He has to clear. Actually, no, he's gonna go for face, right? It really like Osaka has been playing Mech Shaman the slowest I've ever seen anybody play it. Every time I see him play, he's always so cautious about it, and it's working for him. Like he's always like that that warrior game we were talking about earlier, right? Like he played it so carefully, but it ended up winning him the game, uh, where a lot of people would have said, "Just go all in, shove it, uh, you know, try to do your best with the face and top deck your way to victory." He went for a slower playstyle, and it worked. So maybe again, well, uh, we'll see that come into action. I'm so disappointed, but he lost that game. <laughs> I am still disappointed about it. I am still disappointed because I thought he played this so well. Um, yeah. Like, it was he amazing. It to a top deck, to like a 1 out of 10 top deck or something like that. Yeah, it was very All unlike. Alright, so apparently uh, we're going to see the Avenge Competitive Spirit Hero Power. And this is looking amazing for Xixo. Like, this is going to be a board, you know, chuck full of uh, two twos next turn. One of them will be a bit bigger than that, too. That was actually a really good draw. Even though he drew a lot of secrets until now. Um, it ended up putting, being not bad. When you have a big board, you force him to trade, but uh, he cannot because of Avenge. And then if yeah. he doesn't, Copa Dispirit is going to buff the dudes. I think you just play Tasca Totemic and Oyotron, go for full face, hope you top deck some damage, hope he doesn't kill you. You just go for the race here if you are Oskaka. Um, you hope for the Flame Tongue. So you play Tasker first, you hope you get Flame Tongue, and then you play Anoyotron in the other part of the Flame Tongue. So that Anoyatron is also buffed. You definitely don't play Anoyatron first. I don't think there's any reason to play Anoyatron first. Well, there is one reason to play Tusker first. Well, you could play Tusker, well, yeah, let me say. You could play Tusker like on the far left, but it's not really going to be better. Oh, he tried to trigger. He's mm. checking for Noble Sack. Checking for secrets. I don't know. I mean, if he goes face with that Shredder, that's gonna be... Oh, what a crazy pickup here. This is probably the... Like, I almost want to say the best. Mm, yeah, because he only needs Burst now. If he gets yeah. the Burst, he wins. Oh my god. Six so the crazy... The top deck to save them all. He, he looks so relieved. He's like, alright, alright, I might win my game finally. <laughs> this deck has been hell for me to pilot. Somebody give me the win. Oh, uh, uh. six so that would be funny. If, feel really good. I would love it if this deck becomes like the best deck in the meta, and we look back at this tournament and we are like, why were people trash talking this deck? It's I the think best. this deck needs to be refined. I, I'll be honest with you. I think there's like a, a lot of tweaks you could make to it to just improve it massively. But the the idea is super sound. Like there's so little you can do to stop it from flooding the board at some point. They're gonna have something big, or they're gonna have many small things, but they're all gonna be annoying. And it's going to be really frustrating to remove. Yeah, after months and months, Patreon is still not super refined. It's not like one Patreon list that ha has to be played. Right. This is a late playing, uh, no armor smiths now and stuff like that. So I wonder how much time it will be until people find a, a really insane refined Paladin list. I know it took a lot for Miracle Rogue too, back in the day. Right, it took uh, it took a long time. Oh man, that pickup from 6 is like, you know what, let's just kill the... Uh... The spell power, make sure nothing goes out of like out of hand with burst from hand, and then this is guaranteed win for me, unless something goes really He might trade to be safe because the shaman stop decking. Oh he trades. Alright. He trades because the rock biter to the face would have made uh, the Zapomatic deal six. So you just double and, damage on Rock Biter. Well that's a great play because look what got top decked here by the Skaka. I that's still a, don't that's think a great, he would... great point. The thing is that I still don't think he would have lost if uh, he just would have went for face because even if he has like he okay he uses rock biter to trigger the first secret and then he has let's say another rock biter to buff the zapomatic you still don't die and uh, you probably set up for a little better that way. So do you expect flame tongues out of your opponent and then like he can't have both flame tongue and ten damage from hand right? There's no way uh, for him to have all of that, and you're guaranteed lethal next turn. Doomhammer, but he has the secret still. Yeah, exactly. Which is why, like, Flame Tongue plus Doomhammer, Rockbiter would work, but he's overloaded for two, so that can't work. Is oh, there man. any way for Oskaka to top deck something? Uh, no, he's dead at the moment, even with Stone Claw coming up. Even if he had top decked Alakir. 
Even with Alec here, he didn't get it done. Like, even at full mana, 10 mana, Alec here, Lightning Bolt, it still didn't work here. So Xixo is gonna lock a win with his Paladin deck, the sigh of relief from the entire side of Team Archon. I can hear it. I can hear everybody just taking a deep breath and being like, all right, now we can actually take the series, now that this is out of the way. Nice job, Xixo. Yeah, they still have to win with that patron, which struggled quite a while, quite a, quite a lot in this series. Uh, not having Garmersmith is really, really bad versus Forsome boys. They are really aggro heavy on all their decks. So if Zaleg is the patron win, they, they then they can be safe. Also Firebat will struggle quite a lot with the Freeze Mage. Freeze Mage is not the best deck to play against Mech Shaman, right? Right. I was gonna say like the 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 Shaman Mage matchup might be one that I I don't know if Firebat really has any edge on that one. So that could again be an issue. Like in the um the Warlock Zoo is not one that Force will queue into Freeze Mage. So do, do you expect Forsen Boys to queue up Shaman because they've got like an okay matchup against both of his opponents and risk the bench and be forced to queue a zoo up into a Freeze Mage? So there, there are two cases. You either go Mech Shaman or you go Zoo. If you go Mech Shaman, you have two good matchups. And if you go Zoo, you have a bad one and a good one. Let's say you get the bad one. What can go wrong? You lose the bad one. And then you have Zoo and Mech Shaman versus Warrior. I think no matter what, how you go, it doesn't really matter. It shouldn't affect it. I think it's just, you just coin flip the way you right. go here. Unless you have some preference for one of the matchups, if you have some decked cards that we don't know about. Like, we don't have all the info on the decks and stuff to say exactly what is uh, the best thing to go for. Like, for example, it's yesterday... All about the, I, it's all about the bench, honestly, because Skaka just lost, right? It doesn't matter if you're benched and you and the opponents have five wins because they need one more win anyways with one deck. I mean, they're gonna have to queue up into your zoo afterwards. Like, let's assume like, Osaka comes out, patron wins, forces. And then they will have freeze mage anyways. Too. It doesn't yeah. matter if Osaka is benched; they will have to win zoo versus freeze mage and, uh, and shaman. Shaman versus so, patron. Okay. Yeah, bench is irrelevant at four four. Bench is basically irrelevant at the, this stage. RD is cooling me in the ways of the of the benching role. All right, that's fine. That's great. If it's only cool for the Twitch chat to see that benchy thing. Bench. I mean, I like the the full stamp. Uh, like the full stamp is pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw a full stamp once. Crip was they so had, happy. You should have seen him. The entire team was benched. It, they had to call it uh, something like jail and uh, <laughs> make us all jail around oh your my face. God. The Archon jail. <laughs> The Twisting Nether, man. The entire team is sent over there. Nobody <laughs> comes out. Actually, like, there's a bet. If your entire team gets benched, you have to disband the team and rename it. That would have been a cool clause to include into the game. Alright, it looks like a uh, Freeze Mage from Firebat with Novice Engineer. Doesn't want to wait for his Loot Hoarders to die. I was always wondering why people play Loot Hoarder over Novice Engineer. But it's because he trades really well in the early game, but uh, the later you draw into it, the, the better Novice Engineer becomes. Like, if Novice Engineer would have been a 1-2, it would be seen, if it would see so much more play. Of course, yeah. If it was, if the nerf was reverted, it would be played again. Oh, that's a bit tricky. I like the Zapomatic. Oh, never mind. I like the, the Frostbolt top deck, too. Yeah, I think the Zapomatic was great, and then Frostbolt top deck is... Uh... I and mean, I think Firebat was gonna take a lot of damage if he didn't have that. Osaka can go for the esports and get the 3 4. Nope. Still pretty good though, because the uh, the pings can't kill anything at the moment. Um, his curve is perfect as Mech Shaman. Yeah. He goes Fire Guard into Shredder into Doomhammer. I think actually you go Power Mace and then you go Doomhammer to, to override it. Maybe. You actually don't override it, you attack with uh, the with the power mace, and then you play Doomhammer and you can still attack once. Oh my god, he picks up a Lotheb too for the exact moment he's gonna have to push full face. Firebat will Osaka. never see this coming. Well, Skaka's hand is insane. Like, yeah. this is the draw you want to see. Versus Freeze Mage. Hmm. What to do? If Firebat manages to win this game, he's just a god. Hey, maybe he can. Freeze Mage can do all sorts of things. But yeah, it's, he's low on mana, no secret setup, no mad scientist, no board clear ready to go. Yeah, there's a lot of damage coming in, let's just put it that way. Osaka is considering power macing 
and uh, curving out into Pilot and Shredder. But I don't think that's better than just trading the Acolyte with your free 2. Getting him and healing it up. Yeah. Hmm. Like healing totem is, is really sweet. Oh, okay. Oh. Full face. Okay. Once in a while, I guess Oskaka doesn't play conservative Hearthstone. Noxious. I know why he did that. I know why he did that, but I'm not sure if I agree with it. He did that because he wants to curve out into Loteb and then into a, into a Doomhammer kill. But what's the chance of that? Up. I'm not sure. I think the conservative line of play is better in this matchup. As a mech shaman, you have enough time to play all your cards in the best order. And he went for like a subpar order just to have a chance to insta kill Firebat before he gets to act. Because turn 4 is really bad as a freeze mage. He could then play Loteb on turn 5, which is really insane as a freeze mage. Deny that too. And then maybe pick up a lightning board or a rock biter to end the game. But is that really a line of play you want? Maybe after you saw one frostbolt, but Firebat had the second frostbolt. And now what does Osaka do? Doomhammer is pretty bad. Yeah, go Fireguard into Doomhammer into Loteb in the next uh, three turns, but that's also not that great. If you go Loteb now, you're not accomplishing too much. Well, I mean, you can get a lot of damage out, but because one of your minions is going to die, you're getting a little bit less damage on the following turn. Maybe you just play Doomhammer just now and play Curve into Fireguard Destroyer. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Do you trade? Not really, right? I mean, if you went face on turn two, I don't. I mean, on turn four, I don't think you're changing your mind here and just deciding to not to kill the acolyte, right? Yeah. I mean, the yeah, only no the only thing I could see is maybe uh, if you want to avoid getting coin blizzarded, so you kill maybe the novice and then go face, but you don't kill the acolyte. Okay, so he does exactly that. Like coin blizzard is the only thing that changes this, but even then, it's not even a big deal. But why is it changing it? Because on the following turn, if you're developing minions, like the 1-1 the one -one and the 1-1 the one -one can kill your uh, your healing totem. And then Blizzard on the following turn would wreck you, pretty much. It's just that with Doomhammer developed right now, I feel like Oskaka is playing it like a, against a control warrior. Where the faster you get it out... Like, I remember the old days of Shaman versus Warrior. You have Doomhammer, you can probably push for lethal very early. Well, they could have had Harrison, and he knows Freeze doesn't course, have Harrison. Yeah. So, so versus Freeze Mage, yeah, versus better. Freeze Mage, Doomhammer <laughs> is... I would even consider keeping Doomhammer. If you, keep, if you play one Doomhammer, you probably keep it versus Freeze Mage, because it's like the best card you can have. Just yeah, I can curve see that. Yeah. I can see that, it, make, it makes a ton of sense. You can definitely make a good argument for that. 16 damage, why not? Potentially um, more with the Rock Biter. It uh, doubles the Rock Biter, so... It's very good. Oh my god, I just realized why you were confused about the blizzard. I thought I. I was gonna say Cone of Cold. I meant Cone of Cold. Oh, the one ones with Cone. Yeah, sorry about that. I just completely. I was like, why is he confused? That seems to make so much sense. No, I meant Cone of Cold, RD. I'm so sorry about that. Alright, sorry about. I, yeah, never mind. That was completely yeah, I was my really bad. <laughs> I was really confused. Right. Because if there's some. If there's a player of Harrison that knows all the card names, that's you. Yeah, yeah, I completely messed that up. Like, the I just title the is teams. long gone. There we go. I have a visual memory and I only remember the picture. That's why sometimes I call it like the Tuan dude or something like that. But the you remember all the hits names. Face. Yeah. yeah, the Tuan that hits face. <laughs> the Lepernome? Yes, that one. <laughs> yeah, the little annoying guy. Uh, Alright, so Firebat is able to stay in the game a little bit longer. Now his board is frozen, so no incentive to load up just yet. Is there? Interesting. So Scott thinks. Lot is best, uh, Lotheb is best uh, on the mage's turn seven, or when you proc the block, or when you're about to proc the block. That's the three situations you play Loteb. or desperation Loteb. or or curve Loteb, What he wanted to achieve earlier, if his uh, polisher that wouldn't have died. So he's just dead, basically. That's it. Is he? Yeah, he's. Ten, twelve. Oh no, it's one off, right? It's not, he's one off lethal, so there's a chance that Fireback can do this. But he's got two chances at the spell power totem. Tuscar totemic, hero power, oh. or just Tuscar a Tuscar actually deck. has flame tongue too. So oh, first, you're right, that's he, even better. Your first hero power. Good point. Your first hero power, right? It doesn't matter. You can Tuscar. Yeah, you can do everything on whatever order. It can all, they can all spawn in the right spot, no matter what. 
So what is the chance? It's like 25% to get spell power, and then the Tusker also has 25% to get you a favorable totem. So... Yeah. That's right. Worst case sense. scenario, like the good thing about this situation is you can always change your mind, right, in the middle of it. Because you're not committing to a play that you'd back from, like, that you back from. You'd always just go for this line of play. Yeah, he had co close to 50%, like 40-something percent to win the game here. Yeah. Never lucky. I'm not sure how he managed to fit Spider Tank in the deck. I wonder what, what cuts he made. Cut. Yeah. You don't cut anything by but by adding Tusker, you have to cut something. So he is now forcing his opponent to have a board wipe and have a way to heal himself. And that is gonna be the Icelands to face. What can Firebat do? What is his best line of play? Flame Strike, Ping Lotheb, go face and Ice Lance your opponent's face. That that's about it. I mean I guess you could Alex yourself, but you're still dead for the most part. You lose to so many things, but it's probably the only line of play you have. Yeah, you yeah, you lose to a... Crackle, you lose to Lava Burst, you lose to um well with Ice Lance to face, you don't lose to a weapon at the very least. And then you can maybe Alex yourself. God, I hate those moments. As Freeze Mage, this is exactly the worst spot to be in. I mean, this is even worse because he's not even scrambling to put secrets on the board. He just doesn't have them. Yeah, but if he pulls this off and Osaka has uh, bad RNG on the totem again, then Firebat is favored to win a game that we never thought he could. Let's see if Oskaka gets the uh, the RNG gods on this side and finds the lethal. He has so many things, as long as it's not a rock biter or some kind of mech that doesn't do anything. And that's going to be it. Oskaka will take it against Firebat. So 5-4 in favor of the Force and Boards. This series is pretty close, to say the least. Yeah. Don't you think he had to hear a power to see the RNG still? <laughs> Yeah, just just like see if you can get a spell damage and lightning bolt to tilt Firebat so that he loses his next game. Is that is that how you play Hearthstone? That's pretty dirty, are you? Yeah, you try to get every single advantage in these kind of situations, but I don't think Firebat is the person that would uh, go on tilt. Of course. No, I don't think so. And now it's, it's up to Forsen. Player. It's up to Forsen. He has to win against two decks, but I can't say his matchups are very good. It's pretty rough. Freeze I mean, Mage Freeze hard. Mage and uh, Freeze Mage and Grim Patron. Like that's those are two matchups that you don't really want to go up against. Uh, but there's no Armor Smith in the Patron, so again, that's giving you a little edge. But again, you have to handle the Cruel Taskmasters, which will also be able to be used as removal. But I oh, think the we, can put it, all we can put it roughly at like thirty percent versus Mage and fifty percent versus the Warrior. Mm -hmm. So that means he has like a sixty-five percent to win the series, right? Something like that. Still not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, it's just that he has to... Like, the, the Freeze Mage is already almost lost. Is it really 30%? Is it that high for Zoo? I guess nowadays, because they're so sticky, it's a, it's a lot better. Yeah, Mulganis and stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah, also Gormok is probably useful in this matchup as 4 damage to the face. Well, because you'll have a board, they usually, like, freeze it. So they go for the better matchup first, Team Archon. And they want to rely on Zale afterwards if Firebat manages, manages to win this one. Forksen has the Owl. Do you keep it? Against a Freeze Mage, I probably would consider it just because I kind of need my board. I mean, I, I don't really see... I mean, you, what are you looking for? You could otherwise look for Flame Imps, Knife Jugglers. I thought the Egg was okay-ish. Yeah, you're egg looking okay for Flame Imp to start super, super hard. Yeah, but if he has Frozen Bolt, Flame Imp is pretty bad. But he picks the egg, and that's really good. But yeah. and this that's is the reason cool. why this is the reason why Loot Hoarder is also pretty good. But Firebat runs one Loot Hoarder, one Obvious Engineer, right? Oh god. Why do you call yes, he runs yeah. one of each. Sorry, he. Died. I don't think he runs. I haven't seen Pyroblast, and I haven't seen Malagos. Although it might just be it's like some kind of mid card that he cut to include it, like Blizzard. Maybe a single blizzard, yeah. These I mean, it's less common. Yeah. 
Both players are drawing well, in which case, usually the one who gets away with it is the Freeze Mage. With this kind but of we'll hand, I might, even, I might even see Forson going for a turn 6 Doom Guard. You go Im Yang Boss into Defender of Argus, then you dump your hand, then you play Doom Guard on 6. And that's a lot of pressure, which I'm not sure if uh, Firebat can uh, deal with. Like, here's a spot where Gormok is not bad. I mean, it's accelerating the clock by quite a bit. It's like a free power of welding to face. It's pretty insane. Oh, no, he broke Gormok. <laughs> a little too late. To the party. He can still, like, uh, play it after he gets the proc from In Yang Boss. I don't think you go for the flashy play of just uh, trading the In Yang Boss so that uh, you can play Gormok next turn. You I don't think that's worth though, it. Right? You play Defender for sure. Yeah. But you trade with the egg, you don't trade with the 3 5. I would even go face with the egg. Is that uh, a drawback? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a consideration. I think he he should have one face, right? Is there any reason not to? As you said. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe him. like a Frostbolt ping, but that's definitely gonna happen on the M Gang boss. He's just giving you more 1 1s. Um, yeah, I really don't know. Maybe he wants to get the egg damage a little bit. Wow! <laughs> well, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of health to remove. That's a really heads up play. Does he get punished by anything? Right now, it doesn't look like it. So he needs a punished implosion. By... He needs four on implosion, right? Yes. So you implosion first, right? Oh, what if it doesn't work? It will work. It has to. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> RDU, I can tell you have a lot more faith in the RNG in this game than I do. Uh, if this works, this is the game-winning play. Right? Like, there's nothing else to say about it. Oh, I know why he traded. To set up the egg in Blizzard range. Okay, okay, that's good. There we go, there we go, it makes sense now. Sort of. Yeah, that, that really is does. a good way. Alright, he's oh. not gonna go for Forza it. Forza doesn't trust his RNG, he thinks it's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, from all the games that I've seen him play, sometimes I want to agree. Um, but it, it's just I... that he reacts to it so heavily that it's very different, of course. I'm pretty sure that he would have used the implosion if it hit like two. <laughs> maybe three, just, just to keep him off. May, maybe yeah, three. Just be like, you were so close, Forsen, but you didn't do it, Forsen. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. it looks like he's got the boat, the two blizzards that we spoke of, he that he might have cut. Um, but Firebat is looking pretty scared here. I mean, 11 health, pretty uh, pretty low, but the double blizzard is something that can carry him forward. Oh, that's a nice one. It's not that nice if he hits two, though. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, the two. Oh no, it was three. three. As I Good said, thing he didn't use that on the, the Doomsayer, right? Good thing he didn't use that on the Doomsayer. Something also always that uh, bugged me was, do the cards have like the RNG from when you draw them? Preset, like, yeah. Yeah, pre is it preset or do you get it on spot? Because you have to find how to manipulate those variables, right? So that you can play... Religious. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the best time to become religious when you. Oh, play when you oh! don't think it's Dr. Boom, I think you it can worked. afford to be religious. It worked! Your Force prayer has been answered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. I lied. It wasn't. <laughs> um, the boom bots are pretty good, but again, Gormok. Ah, Gormok yeah, will be played. Gormok is great here, right? It's gonna be played, it has to be played. Great. What if the Boombots uh, don't kill Archmage? <laughs> what if? He can go for the Owl. Does force and see the Owl, his own minion? <laughs> oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Force. He has the chance. You Come can on. do it. Do it. I know the, the play. You go for the Owl on the, your own minion, and then you Gormok. And uh, you have a lot of chances of both killing the Antonidas and proccing the Brock, and then you just don't guard and you win. So, okay, you, you, you all the 7-7, seven, seven, and then you played Gormok. No, no. Okay. No, okay. it's okay, it's okay. You all I, seven, I seven, thought he was going to play Doomguard. Then you Gormok, you Gormok the Antonidas. 
And right, um, to, to attack with the boom bot, right? Yes. Just do it for some. Gorma land on Idas. No. Now he cannot Gormok. Yeah. What? That, that was. I'm a little surprised. What? Oh! Oh! If he Gormoked <laughs> first, <laughs> he would have won. Forsen's space right now is worth a thousand dollars. Forsen, nobody did this Gormok. to you. You that's did this to yourself. Gormok. Forsen, you you brought this upon your. That's right, Forsen. Smash the ground. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is perfect. I'm loving this. All right. Well, I guess I guess I don't have to be. He's still in an okay position, so it's not a table flip moment, right? I don't want if, to. I don't want to be Oskaka or Chucky in this spot. You think that the salt would be even bigger? I know that this kind of happened to me with Liquid when I went to O and I, then I just watched our series. I was like, I was uh, feeling more pressure than when I was playing, just watching the series. So do you Nova Healbot here? Hmm. I kind of like that better than Blizzard. Because your Ice Block is almost quote unquote guaranteed not to get buffed. And then you can go for Blizzard Ice Berry on the following turn and probably be okay. The fact that your barrier that your block is so far from being popped is such a big deal. Wow. Will force him be able to like uh, not get I'll tilted by what happened? Like last turn I I calculated something around eighty percent to both Kilantonidas and proc the block. It was like a tremendous percentage. No, I think it was guaranteed to work because you hit for seven he hits for four, and even if the boom bot hits Anthony's for one, you can finish it off. Well, if you hit so, it twice for one, you can finish it off, but then you, you cannot uh, proc the block. So you need no, the boom, the boom bot to hit for if two. The, if, if the boom bot explodes on Anthony, because he's on three health, so if you attack with the boom bot, it goes down to two, and then if it hits Anthony for one, you can still re attack and proc the block. It was 100%. It was like, there's no way. Oh, it yeah, it was 100%. Yeah, there was no right. way it didn't yeah, work. Yeah, it was 100%. Yeah, there is. It was like it was the perfect wow. play. The perfect play spotted by RDU in 0 0.2 seconds. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll have um, Forsen looking for his top deck. He needs to start praying again. So he's gonna try to set up a sick flame strike. I can't fault him because what he's looking to do here is wipe the board completely clean and kill the imp that comes out of the imp gang boss. So the only way he does that, oh wow, that's gonna hurt. All right, he doesn't play it. Wise choice. So ice barrier is obviously uh, a lot better. That way you don't even have to ping the uh, the doom guard. I think I think this spot fire, but has it. I don't well, see a way for force person to wait. Yeah, Forsen didn't quite pop the block when he had the opportunity, so... Forsen's best draw is Mulganis, but even that will just get answered by Fireball, and it's only a matter of time. Actually, Fireball doesn't really have a mass removal. Uh, okay, it's not over yet. Hmm, very interesting. Well, it's not It's not over until the, the mage finds his lethal right away, right? Like, that's pretty much the only thing you have to... Ice block okay. will give him more time. Now you now, now start calculating damage. So you can deal 13 first, put him at um, 6, next time you deal 4, and then, and then double with ping. the ice block, yeah. Okay, so how much turn, How many turns do you need to win? You need 4 turns to win, unless you total like a damage. So, 4 turns to win. Okay, first ball face is probably not the play. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not removing enough damage. Killing this removes four, so maybe you have more time. Like, the pings along with the fireballs might be enough. Firebat's definitely been in a position like this before, uh, where he knows what he has to do. There's a few outs in his deck that probably stabilize him even more than he already is. Like, an Alex Strother would be insane. Yeah, Firebat uh, goes for the top deck line of play. The okay, top deck one, fireball. It's gonna work. It's gonna work here, that's... Four sense top decks at least are gonna work. Let's hope Fire Bass line up as well. Ice right, block number one popped, and Fire Bass is gonna be trying to recover from it. Pretty rough, he's gonna be exactly at one. 
He can still top deck fireball, right? Or he doesn't have any more fireballs. He's got no more of those. Oh wait, no, one of them was given hit to him by Archmage. right, he could top deck fireball for the lethal. That would be a crazy finish. So he can ice block fireball once and find the other one with card draw. Oh! And he finds it off the I'm top. Sorry. I'm sorry. RDU, I'm you have He's come, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have come to, uh, to fruition I'm sorry. as a caster. I'm sorry. You may now I'm curse sorry. people I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm by calling the cards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is He's this is sorry. He will he will sorry until the rope because he needs to tilt Forsen. He needs to make Forsen feel bad so that Zalei has a better chance of winning. <laughs> I'm loving this. If there is a time to tilt Forsen, now is the time to tilt Forsen. And now Forsen is telling himself, I will not fall for that crap. I will not fall for that crap. And by repeating it, he's actually falling for it more and more. <laughs> Look at Firebat. Thank you. Whenever people do this, Forsen knows they don't have it. And now Firebat just has it. And now Forsen turns around in his chair and he sees the little. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this, this is just... Unreal. Oh, poor Forsen. This series gets like better and better because you know that it goes to the last game after a tremendous missed lethal kind of. And right. the, th the team that loses is out. Right, they're out. knocked out of the event. They're absolutely knocked out. Uh, this is the game to decide who stays for their chance at the $250,000 prize pool. So we'll see exactly... If, uh, if Forsten is affected by that loss. I mean, I'd imagine he will be, at least a little bit. If not the tilt, then the pressure alone. The pressure this alone game, is enough. This game might make uh, into the Hearthstone history. Yeah, especially if Zelay misses lethal with the, with the rope on Patron. That would make history. Well, if there is a matchup where you can uh, miss some Patron things, it's versus Zoo because you don't really have animation time to kill all the one ones. But as I said earlier, this is probably also like a really perfect 50-50 if both players play it correctly. And uh, I'm really curious how it goes. Usually Zoo mulligans for really fast start and hopes they don't have the fiery war axe. But as we know, he'll have the fiery war axe as an answer. He will have it. <laughs> if, he, if he gets it again, I think we can safely say that this tournament is completely rigged, followed by Blizzard to improve Green Patron's win rate in order to inflate it to then justify nerfs so that all our BRM purchases are wasted. This is exactly what I think is going to happen. All right, here we go. Let's see if the fiery win axe shows up in Zalei's hand. I think Zalei already mulliganed, did he? I don't think he... Ki Wait. Did he keep Patron again versus Zoo? And Krolta's Master and Whirlwind? He did, you're right, he did. He, he kept exactly this, I uh, maybe not the Whirlwind, I'm not sure. It's funny I, because... I've seen him play Grim Patron like, gre really greedily, right, earlier? I don't say I'm a better... I don't say I'm a good Grim Patron player, but I would have just thrown all the hand away. We have like I super think, different uh, playstyles, me and Zalei. Well, hmm. the positioning of the cards is different. So then he threw we it had, away. I think he threw it away because we had Cruel Task Patron Whirlwind in the hand. And he got I don't Whirlwind. Think that's a to, yeah, that's definitely not a hand to keep. I, I would have to say. I don't know. I'm not a Patron expert by any means. But uh, I don't know. I don't see the way you beat Zoo with that greedy of a hand. Because the Zoo is not going to have two ones that you can Cruel Task Master. You can you rarely get the Whirlwind off. And Patron? That's really unrealistic to think you can get Patron off on turn 5 or 6. I think we joined too late as a spectator to see if he mulliganed, I'm not sure. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure just the ordering of the cards was weird. Either that or the mulligan came out really, really like the, the randomization of it was super weird. Um, so we'll have to see how he's going to handle this. I mean, the moment he can get himself a patron board, he might be okay. But Forsen's hand is looking pretty good. He's got minions that just won't die, and if they do, they're going to bring something out. So this is definitely a position that Forsen's happy to be in. Also, thinking about it, the way you improve as a Hearthstone player is by watching somebody else win with plays that you would have not made because that plays right. potentially become viable for yourself. So if Zalei shows me the way of uh, keeping Green Patron and executing uh, it perfectly, making four patrons on turn five or six, then uh, sure. What I I'll like here is the, the Warstone Commander Cruel Taskmaster is definitely an okay play. Like, because you can trade one minute away. The question is whether or not you pick up, like, it's a, it's a play that he might have been considering. I expected to see Whirlwind, like, preset, but it's really, we it's really weak against Defend of Argus. 
The nice hand is really weak right now versus what Forsen has. He wanted obviously something else, I think. Yeah. And um, Forsen is the kind of player that would do the bluff, for example. Like here, I'm sure that uh, many people would just uh, tap into Daryl Falfa and Abusive. But uh, there is some merit to also playing Void Color. Never mind, he still does that play. I'm not sure if I like the positioning. With a better positioning, he could have killed the egg too. But actually, no, maybe no, never you, mind. you might not want to pop the egg. Yeah, yeah, you probably don't want to pop the egg. Oh man, this is such a weird hand for Zale. Do you have to, you I have to that. execute this? Do you, or are you afraid? Like, cause the thing is, if Doom Guard comes out, you're even weird of a, like weirder of a spot. Um, I mean, you could play Patron Whirlwind into Patron Cruel Task. That's not and then reliable. you set up, you have like two executes set up, but you need the executes against the Doom Guards. Zaleni did fiery water axe, that's why I think you hard mulligan for that card. But again, I, we might just uh, didn't, we might just not see the early game and the mulligan stage. Now Forsen is in a spot where he would win like 80% of the time. Just Wait, playing about, Pigeon myself, about, I know. Uh, War Warsong Commander into full task on the 2-3, and then you attack into it. That room is kind of like, it's so it's weak. A very weak play, yeah. Yeah. Th in theory, the way you win is surviving until turn 8 where you can play your Patron combo, but the only way you do that is by hard mulliganing for early game removals that sustain you until turn 8. You have to at least kill the, like, the wolf or something. Like, some damage has to be removed from this board. Alright, there we go. I still think Forsen has like way too much damage for Zalei to take it. Like he has I abusive agree. for the egg. I agree. Abusive like we've seen his egg. entire deck, so there's no brawl in there. Forsen is playing the game of the tournament for his team at the moment. This is at least one of the games. There's a lot of them coming up. If he gets out of this one, it's one step at a time, but this is definitely one of the most important games for him to win. Is there any reason to play Creeper over the Imgang boss? Um that's not really protection against Patron, but Patron's not coming out next turn. Protection against Brawl is that's the only thing that loses you the game. Uh, he knows he doesn't have, have Brawl. Yes, yes, yes. You have a Void Caller that might die. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you spot all the things so fast. What now? Yeah, I just can't play in a tournament. It's impossible. I, I'm incapable of playing in a tournament setting. It doesn't work for me. I can play Challenge Stone, all right. That's pretty sweet. So let's see if uh, Zale is going to try to play the War Song. I mean, if he goes for the War Song, there's no recovery. He has to wait for next turn. So I think stalling by going maybe Acolyte of Pain, Frothing, uh, Execute. There is one problem here. Even if Creeper is the worst card you want to have versus Patron, if you have two Creepers, they cannot kill both. They will they eventually fill up their board. board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then That's they cannot deal with both. And he needs Whoa. a Whirlwind for that. And he already used the Whirlwind. And then he doesn't have mana for Whirlwind, even if he had the second one. So, two Creepers is actually pretty good. Like a huge board of uh, one and twos that have death rattles is not bad versus Patron, by any means. So, Zale has to armor up in order to live. If he doesn't, he's dead. And now he gets the Ingarn boss, as you said earlier. So, it's yeah. a really good play by Forsen. Forsen finds more damage. That's going to be it. Um, there's a chance still. It's gonna sound weird, but there's a chance that Zelay can win on the back of the next turn. Cause look at the amount of damage on the board: it's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So he's got only eighteen damage. Zelay is on, you know, twenty-one, and next turn his his board is gone, and he might have to just kill the frothing here. Obviously, being forced into probably just implosion. Yeah, for damage. Don't even need to spawn the imps at this point. Nice oh. job, Forsen. That's perfect. And now Zale is gonna get the patron wet dream. The problem is he might not have enough room to spawn all the patrons and make everything work. He doesn't have enough room. For that's, sure. That's not bad. That, is not enough. Four, four. that can kill the 4-4. Four, four. Um Zale needs to play it really fast. And if Forsen keeps BMing and emoting. It might lag his computer enough to like uh, steal some uh, <laughs> microseconds. We can dream. Now he doesn't know what to kill. What do you do? So like, go, 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 do the play. 
do the play. <laughs> you gotta inner rage to get that 4 4, I think. Don't you? What? You first want to kill the Ingang boss. The reasoning is? You don't want the Ingang boss to spawn more 1 1s. Well, they won't matter if you have patrons. Because you don't even want to kill the Ingang boss. You can't even kill it with a full board. I mean, if you kill the 4 4, you're fine because you can spawn another wave of them. But then you haven't solved the problem with the Imp Gang boss at all. So you kill. You can't kill a Flame Imp. Force and 1 if he comes back. That's it. Force and Zelt, he called his mom. He's like, Mom, I did it. I did it. Mom, I did it. I did it. <laughs> you got your dad. He's got his mom. He's calling her. He's telling him, I did it. We're going to move through to the possibility of a chance at this. And now he's going to BM like Firebat BM'd him. But he doesn't realize the is actually not Firebat. I'm sorry, Forsen. That's the wrong person. That was some over the top BM for Forsen. But uh, he ends up taking the game. Now he would enjoy it. He enjoys it. <laughs> uh, I beat Patron. Oh, and there, there we go. Here we go. Okay, what's, what's the chance of uh, making a misplay here? Considering the last game, I'd say 100%, but I'm not sure. Okay, first then. At attack the Ingang boss into something, come on. Like, he can misleak. He can lose yeah. the connection. Other than that, he'll pull away <laughs> the game. Oh, he, he's trembling from the pleasure, and then he, he just attacks the wrong target. Wow, he's and then really the, the, the rope well. hits. The rope hits. Like, he's like a serial like killer with his victim. He plays with it. I think all Hearthstone players are a bit like that. Like Sega killer killers with their victims? Forsen takes the game, doesn't misplay at the very end there, which is very good. That was a very technical play right there with a the perfect APM. Nicely done on the rope there. Life coach level APM for this action. So it turns out Forsen Boys is going to take it over Team Archon. And uh, wow, that was a really close match, like a really close match between both teams. Uh, pretty intense. Yeah, I loved it. And we look forward to, for to face for some boys tomorrow. It'll be a really interesting series. Right. I hope tomorrow, it'll be as interesting. Uh, yeah, I hope it'll be as interesting as today's series. Oh, that's all, uh, that, that's all going to depend on you guys, right? Like, I'm just casting the games. I'm enjoying when I see a Gormok miss lethal. Like, I'm enjoying all these things. So, I hope uh, we get a lot of cool games. It's going to be Nihilum, which won, uh, which lost early, earlier versus Temple Storm. They had a chance to go directly to the live finale, but Temple Storm is going there. And now, if Nihilum wins versus Force and Boys, then they're going to move on uh, themselves to the finale. So, Force and Boys could still get another win and move on there. So this is a really important match tomorrow. It's going to be at the exact same time. Uh, I mean, it's going to be the same format, right? Team uh, Team Conquest, best of 11, same things. I don't think you guys can change decks unless I'm mistaken. So no, you have all the, the information. Uh, you've got all the information you need uh, again, like about your opponents. You've cast them today, so maybe that's going to give you an edge. You know, knowing everything that's in there. Of course, you can always watch the VODs, but it's even easier uh, when you were watching it uh, in the first place, just uh, from casting. So that's going to wrap it up for the day, guys. Um, now, before we go, a little shout out to the partners. We've got Alpha Draft and uh, Amazon. So Alpha Draft is an esports fantasy league. If you want to check them out, it's alphadraft.com. You have a chance to win a portion of $300,000 they give away each week. They're going to match up to $250 on your deposit, if I'm not mistaken. And as far as Amazon, they're doing a giveaway for 50% discount packs on 40 packs. So you can check them out at uh, tmarcon.com slash Amazon or amazon.com slash Hearthstone. Now that's out of the way, RD, before we wrap it all up, uh, any last thoughts? That's it. I hope we win tomorrow so that we redeem ourselves for today. That's all. All right. Well, I hope uh, you don't end up at a 6 1. Uh, so, yeah, guys, until tomorrow, be there. It's going to be the same time. You guys have a nice one, and thanks for watching.